Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Hogwarts. Opening sign in Mangekio Sharingan. Chapter 26. Braun. Neville ran over in surprise. Mrs. Longbottom also raised her eyebrows in surprise, as if she didn't expect to see Braun here. Braun, where have you been? My grandma and I didn't see you in the fireplace and thought you miscast the spell and got lost. Braun smiled awkwardly. Although he knew that he was not lost, he didn't dare to explain what he saw on the flow network. So he could only acquiesce to Neville's words. Looking at Mrs. Longbottom's eyes that seemed to be able to penetrate people's hearts, Braun planned to tell the improvised story. But he found that the other party didn't ask what he meant. The mental power is seriously depleted. But the euphoria will make you feel better. Leaning on the sofa, Neville's uncle Algy handed Braun a transparent potion bottle containing a silver-white potion. Braun didn't say no. After drinking it, I could indeed feel the pain in my mind relieved a lot. At the same time, an unexplained joy made Braun smile. He knew that this was the effect of drinking the potion. Although Algy's cabin doesn't look big. But the space inside is not the same as the outside. The wooden house was cast with a traceless stretching spell. A small wooden house. It's like a luxury villa inside. There are table chairs and lamps in a distinct 19th century Victorian style. Decorative walls carved with pearl shells. Of course, the most striking thing in the villa is the various plants. Devil's net, white fresh, psychedelic mushrooms and other magical plants are placed in different areas. Protected by special alchemical glass. It's like a botanical garden or a greenhouse. Are you here to choose a pet? Neville was indeed of school age. Quote. Alger rubbed his chin and said. His wife, Ani Longbottom, thoughtfully presented fruit to everyone. It looks very enthusiastic. Try this, Braun. The fruit of the Elliot tree is delicious. Braun watched as Neville handed over fruit covered in colorful stripes. I always feel that this thing looks similar to a devil fruit. I took a bite tentatively and found it was unexpectedly delicious. The only flaw might be that after eating the fruit, Braun couldn't stop laughing. It lasted for two or three minutes before it ended. The leaves of the Elliot tree can be used to make a potion of laughter. Although the fruit does not have such a big effect, it may still make people laugh. Of course, it's very interesting, isn't it? Quote. Seeing Braun's frightened expression. Algy also took a big bite, and hearty laughter echoed in the living room again. Braun rested for about half an hour, and the headache finally eased a lot. At least you don't have to lean on the sofa all the time. He wandered patiently in the hall, looking at the plants in the glass cover, he couldn't help being curious. Don't look at your original identity as pure blood. But there are not many contacts with these magical plants. After all, except for potion masters, ordinary wizards rarely come into contact with these things. When you get sick, you usually buy some potion ingredients at the pharmacy to make your own, or you buy finished potions. Of course, if you are too sick, you have to consider Street. Mungo's Hospital. There are still very few wizards who really grow magical plants by themselves. Because if you are not careful, you may take your own life. Just like Professor McGonagall's husband, Elphinstone, was stabbed by poisonous needles planted at home and died of poisoning. You must know that he is a senior official of the Ministry of Magic, and his strength is certainly needless to say. Such a powerful wizard died because of this, let alone an ordinary wizard. Almost every year, there are many deaths or serious injuries due to wrong planting of magic plants. Do you want to go in and have a look? Interested to meet Braun, Alger could not help but invite. There seemed to be a great deal of goodwill towards Braun. Braun hesitated but nodded in agreement. Of course, if it doesn't bother you. Together with Neville, the two followed Algy into these glass greenhouses. Just like Braun imagined. This greenhouse was also cast with the untraceable stretching charm. Here is my masterpiece. Pointing to the plant Algy in front of him, he said proudly. The entire greenhouse, except for those alchemy-related aspects. Everything else is made by myself. Untraceable stretching curse, constant temperature curse, and the transformation spell of clear spring-like water. Even the plants in the greenhouse are dug up one by one from all over the world. Quote. Listen to Algy's narration. There was also admiration in Braun's expression. Among other things, the spells that Algy said were not a small project. Not to mention the plants in the greenhouse in front of me. 
follow behind Alger. Braun and Neville listen to each other bragging about their various adventures. Of course, most of these are exaggerated in Braun's view. For example, Algi said that he had traveled to Norway, where he knocked over three Norwegian Ridgebacks with a single magic wand. Braun felt that a Norwegian Ridgeback might be enough for Algi's small body. But Neville listened with gusto. There was even a look of worship in his eyes. It seems that he was fooled by Algi. Had lunch. The two were taken to the second floor of the villa by Algier. Compared with the living room on the first floor, this is no longer a paradise for plants. Instead, it has become a paradise for animals. Owl, toad, raven, snake. Various pets are divided into different areas. Let Braun even mistakenly think that he has come to the pet store in Diagon Alley. The animals here are all descended from magical creatures. And the blood is stable, which is different from the common goods outside. Quote. Scratch the chin of the cat that was circling around his feet. Alger said proudly. Look at what pets you like, you can choose by yourself. With little hesitation, Braun walked towards the wooden shelves where the raven stood. Compared with the owl, this kind of big guy is more in line with his aesthetics. Seemingly aware of Braun's arrival, these originally lazy ravens opened their eyes one by one. He looked at the wizard cub in front of him with great interest. Raven's IQ is already high, almost equivalent to the level of an ordinary human being at the age of seven. Not to mention that these ravens are still hybrids with magical creatures. The advantage in blood will make their intelligence even more outstanding. At least a normal raven wouldn't be sizing up brawn like this. Taking the pork jerky that Algy gave just now, he poured it into the bowls of these ravens, and then Braun showed a kind smile. I want to pick a pet, is there anyone willing to go with me? The ravens quacked, as if discussing something with each other. At the same time, I did not forget to eat the food sent by Braun. It seems that he is quite satisfied with Braun's attitude. And as the pork jerky ate, these big black birds seemed to have reached a conclusion after discussing it. A slightly smaller raven fluttered its wings. Braun just felt his shoulders sink. The raven was already on Braun's shoulder. He was curiously scratching Braun's hair with his claws. It seems that they want to build a nest here. It's just that Braun didn't care about it, but became a little excited. This is the first time he kept this kind of animal as a pet in his two lifetimes. Excitedly, Braun stroked the raven on his shoulder. And gave it a very nice name. There. Tom. That's what you'll be called from now on. Braun said to the raven in front of him with an excited face. Of course, what greeted him was a face full of disgust. Although he is a raven, he also knows that the name Tom is simply a bad street in England. Just like Zhang San Li Si Wang or Mazi, Go Sheng, Kui Hua, and Fatya are on the same level. Braun just pretended not to see its objection. Glad to think that raven's name is Tom. The pet was chosen Braun did not continue to stay here. Instead, he walked towards Algi who was surrounded by a group of cats. Neville, is your pet a toad? Braun asked in surprise. Originally, he thought that with such a good opportunity, Neville would never choose a toad as a pet again like before. But did not expect. He still chose. My grandma said that toads can help me learn potions. Looking at the golden-backed toad staring at the twin dead fish eyes, it looked like, I'm a waste. Braun could only hope that Neville's potions would go well. Of course, this possibility is unlikely. Choose it so soon. Alger stood up in surprise. Looking at the toad and raven combination in front of him, he couldn't help raising his eyebrows. The blood of the invisible leopard, I can only say, child, you have to pay attention in the future. This toad is very fond of playing hide and seek with people. Quote. Neville nodded quickly. He clenched the toad even tighter. And when he saw the raven on bronze shoulder, there was some reluctance in his eyes. Looks like you picked a good pet. The mother of this raven is a red bird. Of course she has another name called Gunpowder Crow. It is a rare creature on the verge of extinction. Feathers have a certain degree of viscosity and contain a large number of explosive elements, which will explode as long as they encounter a heavy blow or flame. In addition, the Gunpowder Crow will temporarily increase in size after inhaling the smoke and dust of the explosion. Of course, as a hybrid, it may not be as strong as its mother. However, the explosive property of feathers is still inherited. So, you usually have to be careful. 
Quote. Listen to Alji. Braun looked over his shoulder in horror. This is too scary. Maybe it will explode. I wanted to plead with Alji to let the other party take the bird back. Replace it yourself. But the words hadn't come out yet. He was taken downstairs by Algila, and returned home with Neville and the others through the flow network. Goodbye. Braun. Goodbye. Seeing Neville walking into the flames with the toad in his arms, Braun waved his hand too. It's just that the expression is a little complicated and relieved. What's the matter? It seems that you are not so happy after choosing a pet. Braun's grandmother came over with a black tea. He glanced at Tom who was flying around the castle curiously. He looked at Braun again. It's not about pets, grandma. Braun sighed. He is still very satisfied with this crow that can only explode. Don't look so scary what LG said. But since the other party dared to raise it at home, he still raised it with a bunch of ravens. That is enough to show that Tom is not as scary as he said. What I am worried about is the matter of flow.com. Although he was very smooth when he came back. But the previous energy was like a thorn in his heart. Make him fidget. Really? Can you tell me about it, kid? Maybe I can give you some help. Quote. Certainly. Braun readily agreed. They were not told to Mrs. Longbottom because they were outsiders after all. But my own grandmother was different. No matter how you say, you and the other party are blood relatives, so you can trust them. Moreover, with the other party's rich knowledge, it might not be able to give him some help. I encountered a worm when I was on flow. Braun told exactly what happened. He has almost nothing to hide except the system. After listening to Braun's narration, Augustus looked cloudy and uncertain. Everyone became serious. Have you told anyone else about this? Braun shook his head. No grandmother. Augustus breathed a sigh of relief. Then there are some complex expressions. I didn't think you'd be exposed to these things so early. There was some nostalgia in Augustus's expression. Forget about that, Braun. They're no good to you. Dot dot dot. Lying in bed Braun's mind still echoed his grandmother's words. It's just that the expression is not as relaxed as he showed. He didn't tell his grandmother all the time. For example, the system, or after leaving the flow network. He can feel that there is a vague consciousness spying on him. Although he didn't know what it was. But presumably it must have something to do with the void worms in the passage. Dumb. Dumb. Be quiet Tom. Braun called out to Tom, who was still very excited at the moment. The other party was really a little too excited. He has been barking non-stop since he came home. But thinking that creatures like crows are mostly nocturnal, it seems to understand its behavior a little bit. Tom, who was reprimanded by Braun, looked very unhappy. But under Braun's nut bribe, he still generously expressed his forgiveness. And be honest. What the heck? School starts the day after tomorrow. When he arrived at the school, with Dumbledore's protection, at least his safety must be guaranteed. Quote. At least in grades 1 through 3. Thinking of this, Braun fell into a drowsy sleep again. Dot dot dot. Three days later. London Railway Station. Braun followed closely beside his grandmother in a small suit. The werewolf Cassatt followed behind with a suitcase. There is also a birdcage with crows in it. It surprised some passers-by. People who like to keep weird pets are everywhere, though. Naturally, these passers-by would not want to offend this seemingly powerful family. After just a few glances, they all left in a hurry. Only a few policemen at the station felt a little puzzled. It's just that they are holding a farewell ceremony for the old marshals. I don't care about those people. Mr. Hank, I'll go and have a look. A young marshal adjusted his hat. Just about to run in the direction of Braun. But he was stopped by the old marshal wearing a suit who was saying goodbye to everyone. Hank has been working here for almost half his life. He is retiring today. And the young man beside him came to take his place. There's nothing to see there, just a kid from a rich family. While speaking, he did not forget to pull the young policeman beside him to leave. The two of us haven't taken a picture yet. Just ask the cameraman to take a picture for us. Mr. Hank smiled and patted the shoulder of the young marshal, and changed the subject. But that's already the fourth person who came here with a strange pet. There were owls, cats, and now a crow. And these people are dressed in weird ways. Before the young marshal could finish speaking, Hank interrupted him seriously. 
Hank's gray eyes stared at him without blinking. It made the young marshal a little uneasy. He didn't understand why Hank, who had always been kind, showed such an expression. Could it be that he provoked the other party? Young people, sometimes don't always be curious about things that don't matter. All we have to do is find Zulus who like to steal. Or thieves and robbers who rob. Instead of staring at kids with pets. This is the experience I have realized in half my life, do you understand? Quote. His tone was low, revealing seriousness. Of course he understood that these, weirds, might have problems. This is not the first time he has seen these people. September and winter and summer holidays every year. He was able to meet these children and their somewhat strange parents at the train station. He even said that there were some familiar faces that he had seen for many years. Witnessed each other from a young child through to parenthood. Since he was working at the London London high-speed rail station, his boss told him a word. Never be curious about things that have nothing to do with you. At first he didn't understand what it meant. But along with my partner, some began to have frequent amnesia. There are also some who seem to have discovered some secrets, and are suddenly transferred from their original posts after reporting. He even said that even if he met them, he would not recognize who he was. Hank gradually understood this truth. These eccentric people are not something they can understand. If you don't want to be turned into an idiot by memory erasure, then cover your ears and close your eyes obediently. This is why he has been able to work here until now, until his retirement. Yes, yes sir. It seemed to be frightened by Hank's expression. The young marshal replied stammeringly. Hank sighed. He patted the other person on the shoulder and said nothing. After taking a group photo, they waved goodbye to these young people. Looking at those energetic young marshals, I only hope that someone in the future will understand what I said today, instead of rushing over without thinking and finally becoming an idiot who lost his memory. Hermione. You are here. Braun didn't have long to wait on platform 9. I saw Hermione's family walking over with big and small bags. Hi. Braun. Hermione greeted Braun happily. After the two met in Diagon Alley, they often corresponded. We even made an appointment to meet at the train station. This is my grandmother, Augustus Trelawney. Braun introduced to the Hermiones. At the same time, he did not forget to introduce the Granger family to his grandmother. Hi there. Augustus greeted the Hermione family seriously. But all the attention was on Hermione. The eyes are bright, as if looking at a cherished work of art. Your special little girl. The stars tell me you're going to be a great person. Under your leadership, the Ministry of Magic will reach new heights. Quote. Augustus' voice seemed ethereal. It's like singing. The Granger family could not help but take two steps back in fear. Sorry, my grandmother was a fortune teller. Braun explained apologetically. But my heart was suddenly startled. Although until his grandmother was a capable wizard. Not as unreliable as Professor Sybil Trelawney. But for the other party, Hermione can see through at a glance and become the Minister of Magic. It also startled him. Fortunately, after saying these words again, my grandmother calmed down. Say no more. Braun, have you found the station? Hermione walked up to Braun again and whispered. At the same time, he gave Braun's grandmother a somewhat apprehensive look. She always felt that the other party's unsharp eyes seemed to be able to see through her. My father and I have been looking at the platform number of the station for a long time, but we couldn't find out where platform 9 and 3 quarters is. Mr. Granger, who was pushing the luggage, also nodded in distress. They were already here. It's just that I have been wasting a lot of time looking for where the platform is. Right here. Braun pointed to the stone wall in front of him. Seeing that a few people didn't quite believe it, they explained it. This is to prevent those muggles from getting here by mistake. So the relevant magic was applied. Only wizards with magical powers can pass through here. Quote. Then, can't my parents stay with me? Hermione looked a little disappointed. So did Mr. Granger. He also wanted to send his daughter on the train himself. That's not the way, you'll be able to pass by holding Wendell uncle and Monica aunt later. This magic is not as strict as imagined. Well, it's getting late. So if you go in early, you can find a good seat early. Quote. Braun and his grandmother just walked towards the stone wall. Then the whole figure disappeared. And Kassad also followed behind with his luggage and disappeared. 
Mom, let's go too. Hermione looked at her mother. There is expectation in the eyes. Monica Granger nodded. Gently brushing her hair back. Dot dot dot. Noisy, hustle and bustle. This is Braun's greatest impression of platform nine and three quarters. Cats of various colors walk on the platform. A caged owl cooed. The child carrying the suitcase impatiently responded to his parents' instructions, and looked at the red train in front of him with some expectation in his eyes. A few wizards in wizard robes responsible for managing order kept warning the little wizards who tried to jump on the rails to be more honest. The siren kept sounding. The white steam made the whole station look a bit foggy. Ding. The cooling of the system is complete, and the sign-in location has been refreshed successfully. Current location. Platform 9 and 3 quarters. Check-in is available. Do you sign in? Quote. Electronic sounds lift bronze spirits. Since leaving flow the day before yesterday. The system seems to have disappeared. Even if he called himself, there was no answer. If it weren't for the system backpack, it would still be usable. He even thought that his system ran away. Sign in. Sign in successfully. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the magic, fluorescence. In Braun's mind, the knowledge of luminescence and the muscle memory of his body made Braun understand the magic in an instant. With a light wave of the magic wand in his hand, the tip of the wand immediately lit up with light. Better than nothing. Single quote. Braun grumbled. Take back your wand. Braun turned to look behind him. At this time Hermione also came out from the stone wall. His expression looked extremely excited. Amazing brawn. This is more interesting than the entrance to Diagon Alley in the backyard of the Leaky Cauldron. She just felt as if she had passed through an extremely thin barrier. Then came another world. A world of magic. Lady Augustus. A hearty voice made several people turn their heads involuntarily. A group of redheads came out from the stone wall. The headed women pulled a little girl. Happy to say hello to Braun's grandmother. Among those red hair, a slightly smaller and thinner boy with glasses caught his attention. If I didn't guess wrong. This should be Harry. Molly. Sending your youngest son to school this year. Braun's grandmother had another smile on her face. Especially when looking at Ginny. It seems that she still hasn't given up on the, role family population revitalization plan. My little son Ron, last time you saw him. The two women with a big age gap started chatting as if no one else was there. It seems that there are endless things to say. But of course the Weasley brother didn't want to stand here and listen to his mother gossip about life's trifles and gossip. Mom, I don't have to get in the car first. Yes, Mom, otherwise Fred and I wouldn't be able to find a good place. Twin brothers, what you said to me stopped Mrs. Weasley, who was still chattering. I had no choice but to say goodbye to my two children reluctantly. Braun also took the opportunity to say goodbye to his grandmother. Pulling Hermione onto the train. Standing in the carriage waiting for Cassatt to bring the luggage up. Then he found an empty box and sat in. It must be said that this was Braun's first time riding a train. Compared with the crowded train in my previous life. The Hogwarts Express is obviously much better. The carriage is divided into compartments, and the space inside is also very large. Enough for little wizards to play around in it. The special luggage rack in the box is not very high, fully taking into account the height of these freshmen. There is also a small toilet on the opposite side of the luggage rack. It can be said that the preparation is extremely sufficient. Woo! A rather sharp siren sounded suddenly. At the same time, it also made those little wizards who were still dawdling anxiously, and all of them ignored their parents' instructions. He took his luggage and got on the train. The footsteps of everyone on the platform also began to become hurried. Some parents stood on the platform and said goodbye to their children reluctantly. Especially those new muggle-born parents. He is full of reluctance and worry about his child who is about to step into the magical world. Say hello to your parents, Hermione. Seeing Hermione sitting in a daze, Braun couldn't help but reminded her aloud. Only then did the girl wake up like a dream. Leaning against the window and waving to his parents. Braun didn't do that. My own grandmother didn't like this kind of behavior very much. And compared to Hermione. If the parents of the wizarding world really miss their children, they can just go to Hogwarts for a walk. The school does not stipulate that parents cannot visit. 
It's just that most of the time, the parents of the wizarding family can't wait for their children to go to school as soon as possible. It's better than being mischievous at home. The train gradually accelerated to the distance. Steam spewed from the chimney at the top of the train with the sound of a whistle. And as the train went farther and farther, the platform became smaller and smaller, and finally turned into a small dot and disappeared. Only then did Hermione sit back in her seat with some disappointment. Braun knew that the little girl felt sad because of parting. In the final analysis, the other party is nothing more than an 11-year-old girl. Would you like some chocolate? Before Hermione Braun added. The specialty of the wizarding world. It's not the same as the chocolate in the muggle world. Hermione nodded reluctantly with curiosity. As if by magic, Braun took out a dozen colorful packaging boxes from the small suitcase and put them on the table. Take one and try it, it's very interesting. Hermione tentatively picked one up. Chocolate frog. Ah. Before I finished reading the name on the box, I was startled by the box that jumped suddenly. Is something alive in here? Hermione looked at the bouncing boxes on the table with lingering fear and seemed a little scared. Seeing this, Braun didn't intend to continue teasing her. Grab a box and open it. The right hand is very sensitive and grabs a chocolate frog that jumps out and stuffs it into his mouth. All that remained was a quivering frog leg twitching outside Braun's mouth. Watching Hermione leaned back in fear. It seems that this can give her some sense of security. Don't be afraid it's just enchanted chocolate. Braun picked up the frog's leg and carefully displayed it in front of Hermione. Even though it was just ordinary chocolate, it still made Hermione a little bit resistant. Well, it seems you don't like these frogs very much, it's Dumbledore again. I think this old guy must be advertising for Chocolate Baby, otherwise there wouldn't be so many duplicate cards all about him. Quote. Braun took out an exquisite card from the box. Just about to throw it away, Hermione asked for it. I know him. Dumbledore, this is our headmaster, I've seen him in Hogwarts, a history. It is said that he graduated from Gryffindor. Wish I went there too. Quote. Hermione said expectantly. It was the first time that Braun knew that the other party had a talent for chatter. Ah, ah. On the luggage rack, Tom patted the cage dissatisfied. It seems to be saying to let Uncle Tom out quickly. Braun, your pet seems to want to come out. Hermione said, pointing to the crow on the luggage rack. Braun waved his hand. Don't worry about him, he's already a mature crow. Learn to open the cage for yourself. Quote. Tom. Sure enough, dogs are the natural enemies of crows. Tom, who understood what Braun meant, looked very angry. A few days ago, I called myself Little Sweet Baby. Now with female wizard cubs call yourself Mrs. Cow. Tom, who decided not to suffer, had to do it himself. Use your own smart little mind to figure out how to open the cage. Such an ordinary thing will definitely not trouble the smart Lord Tom. Hello, is there anyone else here? While Tom was struggling with the iron cage like Don Quixote rushing towards the windmill. The door of the box was also pushed open by the two boys. The two boys were about the same age as Braun, just with strange hair colors. One red and one black. But this is nothing in the magical world with all kinds of blood. After all, the magic world has a series of warriors such as, Giant Knight, Monster Master, Sun Bird God Emperor. Hair color isn't a big deal in this world at all. Oh. It's you. Ron looked at Braun in surprise. His relationship with Braun was not considered close, and he had only met three times in total, including this one. It's kind of like being able to talk a little bit. Just sit down. It's just the two of us here. Braun said very generously. It is certainly impossible for the box to sit just the two of them instead of waiting for other strangers. Might as well just let Harry and Ron in. This is the first time I have come into contact with the protagonist group at the same time, and I am a little excited when I think about it. Of course, it's just the kind of excitement that comes from meeting the characters in the story. If you let him go up and kneel and lick, there is no way at all. I'm Ron, Ron Weasley. This is Harry. Oh my god. Before Ron could finish his introduction, Hermione screamed. She pointed at Harry excitedly. Looking excitedly and curiously at the same time looking at his forehead. You are Harry Potter. The boy who defeated Voldemort. Hermione couldn't help shouting in surprise, her cute little face couldn't help but flushed with excitement. 
On the contrary, Ron stared at Hermione with a frightened look in his eyes. Hermione, we don't usually call him Voldemort, but you know who. Ron explained to Hermione helplessly. He knew from the look on Ron's face that the word Voldemort had provoked him. To be honest, even he himself would feel palpitations when he mentioned this name. It's not about his fear. It was the conditioned reflex formed by the original body in the family's teaching time and time again. Why? Hermione looked very puzzled. Harry's expression was similar to hers. Because of a curse, all wizards who pronounce his name will attract his attention. Certainly. I don't even know if that's the case. But most wizards think so. A powerful wizard will indeed have a whim when others talk about him. Quote. Braun shrugged. This is the information he found in his family's study. After listening to Braun's explanation, Hermione apologized to Ron very embarrassedly. Then they started talking enthusiastically again. By the way, Harry, do you see what the mysterious man looks like? The small, dark-haired boy shook his head. All I can remember is the green light and the muffled scream. As for the rest, I'm sorry I can't remember them all. Quote. Hermione was a little discouraged seeing that she didn't ask for anything of value. But Harry has a character instead. Hermione, was one of your parents a wizard? The reason for asking this question was that he felt that Hermione didn't seem like a pure muggle student. She seems to know something about everything. Not like myself. Do not know anything. Of course not. Hermione shook her head. Seemed curious as to why Harry was asking that. My parents were normal people, they were both dentists. They were horrified when they got their Hogwarts acceptance letter. Thought it was someone's prank. Thanks to the instructor sent by the school to show it in person. Quote. Hermione explained aloud. I know you from reading some books I bought in Diagon Alley. But you can also ask Braun if you are curious about wizards. They seem to be wizards. Quote. Hermione pointed to Braun who was sitting beside her smiling. Hello, I'm Braun Roll. Braun shook Harry's hand. Then Harry couldn't wait any longer. Braun, is your family a wizarding family? He desperately wanted something about the wizarding world right now. Yes, but it's just a small family. In fact, if you are curious, you can ask Ron beside you, the Weasley family is a big family. Not only in England, but also in the ugly country, Gaul and even the distant bear country. Quote. Braun said jokingly. To be honest, he still didn't believe what his grandmother said. But I found out when I really read the history of some family records. Grandma was right. The Weasley family purely focused all their skill points on breeding. Except for a few Asian countries and the Black Continent. The Weasley family's footprints are almost all over the West. No wonder my grandmother was so envious and wanted me to marry Ron's sister. Ron gave an awkward yet polite smile. Because what Braun said was indeed true. The Weasleys were indeed fertile. Let alone their home. There are five children. Those relatives who are relatively close are even more reluctant. Nengsheng has almost become the label of the Weasley family among other pure bloods. Really, Ron. Harry didn't think Ron's family was as big as he thought. Looking at Harry with some admiration. Ron looked a little smug. But then became troubled again. Having more children is not a good thing. Just like me, I am the sixth child in our family, and there are five students above who go to school. Both the elder brother and the second brother Charlie have graduated. Bill is the president of the students' union and Charlie is the captain of the Quidditch team. Even the third brother Percy is now a prefect. Although George and Fred are mischievous, they study well. And it's very popular at school too. To be honest, I'm still under a lot of pressure. Besides these my things are also old. Bill's old robes, Charlie's wand, and Percy's unwanted rat. Quote. While speaking, he took out a fat mouse from his pocket. Hearing Ron's words, Harry, who was still envious at first, suddenly felt that the magical world was not all beautiful. Just like I was at Aunt Uncle's. What I wear are things that my cousin Dolly doesn't want. Watching the fat mouse Ron pulled out of his arms. Ron became interested. Can I see your mouse Ron? Of course I'll introduce you to my pets too. Tom. Quote. After finally getting out of the cage, Tom really wanted to have the backbone to reject Bron's call. However, he still couldn't hold back when he saw the delicious nuts in the opponent's hand. Pityan Pityan flew over from the luggage rack. It landed on Bron's shoulders. 
At the same time, she pecked at his hair twice as if not forgetting to vent. Oh my god, your pet is so beautiful. Ron said enviously. He also looks forward to having a pet of his own. It's a pity that he also knows that the family's financial pressure is not enough to support their family to do so. My pet is Banbon, look. Ron opened his palms. A huge gray mouse was sleeping soundly in the palm of his hand. Perhaps it is too old and some places have begun to shed hair. He is also missing a little finger on his left hand. It's too old. And always likes to sleep, but it has been with us in our house for 11 years. Quote. While talking, he gently stroked the hair of the gray mouse. Even though he said he hated it. But I still like this gray mouse very much. 11 years. But can a mouse live that long? Hermione on the side couldn't help asking. Instead, it gave Braun an idea. Looking at the mouse in Ron's hand a brilliant idea came to his mind. He also showed a worried look. Yeah, Ron, I think the reason Scabbers is sleeping all the time is because he's dying. Some animals exhibit this sleep-loving trait when they are about to die. Quote. What? I'm about to die. What should I do then? Ron panicked. He still has a lot of affection for this mouse that has accompanied him almost throughout his childhood. Braun waved his hand, showing a mysterious expression. I actually have a way to help you, but it might make Banbon suffer a little. What trouble? Ron asked immediately. He felt that if Ban Ban could continue to live, it would not be unacceptable to suffer a little bit. Braun spoke softly. Several people put their heads together. Ron and Harry were fine, just a little surprised. But Hermione blushed. Scolded Braun for being unscrupulous. But Braun, is this really feasible? Ron hesitated to speak and always felt a little unreliable. Of course, those muggles neutered their pets. If you don't believe me, ask Hermione. Quote. Although Hermione felt that this matter was very embarrassing, she nodded. As a child of a doctor's family. Even though she is only a dentist, she has been exposed to many things. Of course, I know that the method Braun said is indeed feasible. Hermione nodded. At the same time, there was Harry's proof on the side. Ron finally believed it. But then he ran into trouble again. After all, there is no place in the wizarding world for surgery on pets. We can do surgery here. This is totally a minor operation. Quote. While talking, Braun took out a few pocket knives from his suitcase as if by magic. At the same time, there are two bottles of medicine. The knife was specially ordered by him from Diagon Alley. There is no special function, but because the metals are magic metals, they are extra hard and sharp. This is his preparation for learning alchemy. An accidental discovery made him realize that his family's soul magic seemed to have a special advantage in learning alchemy. For example, there is also the control of spirit for the activation of metals. Of course, this is also Braun's attempt in the wizarding world. Just like a potionist wouldn't be a poor man. Alchemists are also rich. And in addition, the relationship between his family and Bojan Bach is not bad. Advanced things may not necessarily be learned. But I believe that the other party will still be willing to hand over the basic alchemy knowledge to me. He plans to study after the summer vacation. This is the knife I use to seal magic circuits. It is not a big problem to use it in surgery. This is the potion of euphoria and tranquility. Guaranteed to be pain-free after drinking it. Quote. Braun said confidently. Even Ron couldn't help but believe what Braun said with such confidence. Decided to agree with Braun and give it a try. Then, let's begin. A slightly evil smile formed on the corner of Braun's mouth. I don't know if I sense the danger. Ban Ban shivered in her sleep. The train was still rumbling. The scenery outside the window also changed from city to farmland. Even the smell of soot in the air turns to the aroma of earth. I don't know when it started to rain lightly outside the window, pattering on the window and turning into water droplets, flowing down to form snake-like water marks. Inside the box, a few people were not just idle. Braun is playing wizard chess with Ron. Hermione watched as curiously as Harry. At the same time, don't forget to ask about the specific rules of the game. It seems that he is also very interested in these moving chess pieces. The rules of wizard chess pieces are simple. Just throw dice to decide who goes first. Then different chess pieces have different action methods. The king and queen generally can only act around the board, protecting the bishop in the middle. 
The rook berserker can go on a rampage, and the horse knight can only go diagonally. Minions can only charge forward one grid at a time. Shut up. You idiot. You've already lost two games. The white knight on the chessboard is angrily accusing Ron. That attitude wanted a fight with Ron. The black side laughed. It seems to be mocking the opponent's inadequacy. Ron looked a little embarrassed. However, he still had the cheek to explain to Harry and Hermione, two cute newcomers. As for continuing to play chess with Braun, only fools go. Originally, he thought that he was very good at playing wizard chess with his grandfather since he was a child. Who would have thought that they would lose two games in a row? Ron, who invented these wizard chess? I always feel that it is somewhat similar to chess in the muggle world. Hermione asked curiously. At the same time, he used his fingers to knock down a berserker who was resting. It made the opponent roar again and again. Ah, uh, I don't know much about this. Ron scratched his head in embarrassment. If you let him play chess, he is more confident. If you ask who invented this chess piece, it will touch his knowledge blind spot. This chess piece was invented by a squib named Parr is a man of the 11th century. Because his magical talent was not detected, he was sent away from the magic world by his parents and adopted by a church. At the same time, he used his ingenuity to finally become the bishop of the church. At that time, Muggle society was in the Middle Ages. The divine right is above Wang Quan. To spread the faith. Those churches often organize crusades to carry out conquests. He led the army to defeat the barbaric Viking invaders and force them to sign a treaty with us. Wizard chess was not called that at the time. It is called par chess and it is used by Paul to simulate the battlefield. So you will find that the black and white pieces are Viking warriors and knights we are familiar with. As for why it is similar to chess, it is because both may have evolved from par chess. Quote. Braun narrated in an unhurried voice. This is the record he saw from the miscellaneous news in the family. Of course, it wasn't him, but the original body. The original body's obsession with wizard chess has reached a crazy level. Otherwise, no serious person would memorize the history of these wizard chess games. Hermione looked at Braun with admiration. For a female schoolmaster like her who has studied well since she was a child. Sometimes I will always be attracted to those wise people unconsciously. Honey, do you need a snack? It's already noon. Would you like something to eat? The compartment door was opened. The smiling old woman looked at them kindly while pushing the cart. The cart is filled with all kinds of delicious looking food. From pumpkin pie to honey candies. Assortment of snacks. Of course, there are also many normal lunches. For example some sandwich pies and milk. No, I have something to eat. Pea beef sandwich. Quote. Ron took out a small package with some embarrassment. Inside is a carefully wrapped sandwich. It just looks a little wrinkled. Bring me some pie sandwiches and milk. Braun smiled and handed over two sickles. Bought four meals and came over. But Harry was very generous and directly ordered a portion of each item. A galleon was paid under the witch's enthusiastic smile. Walked over with a lot of food. Filled a small table completely. You have eaten. Braun looked at the things on the table very speechlessly. Passed the sandwich and milk to Hermione and without forgetting to put Ron and Harry's share in front of them. It's just that they don't seem to like these normal foods very much. Instead, they ate those candies and sweets. You guys eat too. Harry shared enthusiastically. He didn't have much idea of the cost of these snacks. After all, no one would think that Garen was so important after seeing the entire treasury in his home. On the contrary, he prefers to be able to make more friends in the wizarding world. Sorry. I can't eat sweets, it hurts my teeth. Both my parents are dentists. I suggest you don't eat too much either. Quote, said Hermione while nibbling on a sandwich. In fact, her parents brought her lunch too. But before she even took it out, Braun bought it. Braun followed suit and shook his head. No, I suggest you eat less too. It is said that the banquet in the evening was very rich. If you eat too much candy, you will lose your stomach. Quote, Seeing that the two refused, Harry was a little disappointed. But Ron was less polite. He threw the beef and pea sandwich on the table, which he didn't really like. He started to eat snacks with big mouthfuls. At the same time, I did not forget to introduce to Harry. This is a licorice wand, but it really just looks like our wand. 
The taste is tinged with licorice. Quote. Harry picked up a small gray wand in the direction the other was pointing and bit down on it. Sure enough, as Ron said, it has a faint licorice smell. This is BB multi-flavored beans. Each one tastes different. Quote. Ron pointed to another small package on the table. Harry picked it up. Look at the tagline, every bean is a strange adventure. Single quote. He felt a little strange. Still, he tried to put one in his mouth. Hiss. It's so spicy. It's like eating chili. Breathing out with his mouth wide open, Harry didn't forget to pick up the milk on the table and drank most of the bottle in one go. Mine is strawberry. Ron picked one up and popped it into his mouth and commented. But nonetheless, Harry put the bag of strange tasting beans aside anyway. Looks like I'm not going to try it again. And this one, ZZ Honey, Pumpkin Pie. Two people eat while introducing. Braun and Hermione, who had already finished their meal, took out their books and read them tacitly. Braun read, A Thousand Herbs and Ferns. Snape had a bad temper. Although he didn't want to develop towards potions. But he also didn't want to be ridiculed by Snape for the past few years. At least moderate is to be done. Ron and Harry, who were having a good chat, also subconsciously quieted down a lot. But at the same time, I also began to feel that I didn't seem to be the same kind of person as the other party. Ron, have you learned a lot of magic too? I see both Hermione and Braun working hard. For someone like me who has never read a book, will he not be able to keep up when he arrives at school? Quote. Harry looked worriedly at the two people who were sitting across from him reading a book quietly. Ron ate his snack without hesitation. At the same time, he did not forget to give his own mouse Banbon a share. It's all right, most wizarding children haven't studied before going to school. As for Braun and Hermione who said they were studying. Well, he subconsciously ignored it. Hello, have you seen my toad? My toad is called Leaf. Oh. Braun you are here too. Quote. A little fat man hurriedly opened the door. It seemed a little nervous at first. But got excited again after seeing Braun. Left lost again. Didn't I tell you to put some marks on it? Quote. Braun closed the book puzzled. After taking the pet from Neville's uncle Algy. Braun had told Neville to remember to pay attention to Rifle's invisible leopard blood. Don't lose him. If it doesn't work, mark it, such as painting it with some red paint, or give it some potion that can easily make the body produce color every day. After all, as a toad, it is still very resistant to poison, and it won't die anyway. Life. You really are a dog. I marked it, but I don't know what happened. I saw it in my hand just now, but suddenly it disappeared. Neville looked like he was about to cry. Where did you lose your toad? We'll find it for you. By the way, my name is Hermione. Quote. Hermione stood up and said enthusiastically. Don't want to move Neville so much. He walked several carriages and no one offered to help him. Hermione was still first. Who knew that the two of them hadn't gotten up yet? Just stopped by Braun. Keep the change, please. Seeing that the two were a little puzzled, he pointed to the position of the beef sandwich on the table. I saw a toad whose body was translucent but colorful in some places, laying down there and feasting on it. Tom was still standing next to him, and the dog was sneaking to help watch the wind. Seems to have caught Braun's gaze. The golden-backed toad seemed to want to escape. Braun waved his wand easily. Then he was brought in front of Braun tied up with the sandwich he ate just now. Make a very dissatisfied croaking sound. Compared with the golden-backed toad he had seen earlier, he looked at Lai Fu, which seemed to be a completely different species. Braun's mouth twitched uncontrollably. What did you feed it? How did it become such a ghost? Quote. Neville looked a little embarrassed. I keep forgetting if I feed him or not. So feed several meals a day. Gradually it becomes this color. Of course I didn't mean to. Quote. Looking at Lai Fu who kept croaking and scolding his mother. Braun couldn't help showing a sympathy. No wonder this shit wants to run there. It was too miserable. It is also thanks to Lai Fu being a toad who is not afraid of being poisoned. Otherwise, sooner or later Neville would play him to death. Tom, who was standing aside, also looked at Neville in horror. Fortunately, I had vision at the time. Unlike Brother Frog, who chose an unreliable wizard cub. Otherwise, sooner or later, his small body will be played to death. Sometimes, happiness and misfortune are contrasted. 
After seeing the tragic situation of Lai Fu, Tom became even more grateful for his wise choice. Neville, where's your memory ball? Ah, I forgot where I left the memory ball. Neville said embarrassedly. Braun. Well he gave up. Neville's mind had been washed too badly. Even he has nothing to do. The only good thing is that Neville is still young. Later as the magic power grows. Although there is no way to restore the memory. But at least he won't become so prone to amnesia in the future. Let Rifle go and let the poor toad finish the sandwich that Ron doesn't like. It can be regarded as adding a touch of light to its miserable life. Then I'm leaving Braun. See you at school later. Neville held Raffle in his arms. Looking at the toad whose eyes were about to protrude from Neville's tight embrace, Braun originally wanted to remind him. But eventually gave up. Let Raffle get used to it earlier. Haven't gotten out of the car yet. A boy with blonde hair came over. There are two tall ones standing behind him. Crab. Gore. The height of the two people is close to 1.5 meters, it is really hard to think that they are just 11-year-old children. It's you. Harry looked a little surprised. He had seen the boy in Madame Malkin's robe shop. I didn't expect to meet again now. Seeing Harry Potter remembering himself. Malfoy looked pleased. But after seeing clearly the people in the carriage, they couldn't help but frown. Especially when he saw Braun, he couldn't help but feel a little apprehensive in his eyes. It wasn't until he saw the two attendants behind him that he felt relieved. I'm Delico Malfoy, this is Crab, and this is Goyle. The two valets behind Malfoy smiled and nodded at Harry Potter. I'm glad you still remember me. Ron beside him couldn't help laughing. But after noticing Malfoy's angry eyes, he quickly shut his mouth. The word Malfoy means evil belief in Old French. And Delagrid is the meaning of dragon. This is like someone introducing his name to others and saying that he is called Long Aoran, which makes people can't help but laugh. But the laughter angered Malfoy. Do you think it's funny? The old robe and the red hair and the poor rat pet. It's Weasley at first glance. Pure blood scum. Oh, look, there's the Longbottom squib besides you. Harry, I think you as the savior should be able to choose who is your friend. Quote. I think it's better not to forget to apologize to Neville first when you let Harry choose his friends. Ron said quietly from the side. If the other party just satirized Ron. He doesn't make a sound. After all, this matter was originally the other party that Ron mocked first. But Neville didn't say anything. Watching Braun speak. Malfoy looked a little annoyed. Luo er. Don't make trouble for nothing. Let me tell you that I'm not afraid of you at all now. Oh. Who was the last time I peed my pants and was taken away by my father? Braun asked teasingly. His eyes turned red again, ready to teach Malfoy another lesson. It's just beyond his expectation, this time Sharingan doesn't seem to work. Malfoy was taken aback for a moment. Then the pendant on his chest lit up white, bringing Malfoy back to normal again. But even so, the sober Malfoy gritted his teeth angrily. The last experience was a nightmare for him. He had never been so humiliated since he was a child. Just now Braun actually used that magic again. While frightening him, he couldn't help being angry. Thanks to the pendant my father bought for me. Otherwise, this time, I might be in trouble again. Malfoy looked a little smug at Braun's surprised gaze. Braun, don't be arrogant, your magic is useless to me. So don't let me enter the illusion again. Crab, Goyle, come on, teach this stinky guy a lesson. Quote. The two tall men behind got Malfoy's instruction and rushed towards Braun with clenched fists pretending to grin. It made Hermione terrified. At the same time, he kept pulling Braun back. It seems that they are afraid that the other party will be hurt. Looking at Crab and Goyle walking towards him, Braun didn't have the slightest worry. You surprised me Malfoy, but I still hope that you can look at yourself first when looking for an opponent. While talking, the wand in his hand was just shaking slightly. The clothes of the two seemed to have life. Start tightening hard. The shoelaces were intertwined and entangled, causing the two of them to fall directly to the ground. Apologize to Neville now. Braun waved his wand and looked at Malfoy maliciously. I, I, I'm sorry. He felt very humiliated. Twice. This is the second time he has been defeated by Braun. He made up his mind in his heart that he must learn magic well, and he will be ashamed. Originally, 
Braun wanted to continue to teach this golden retriever Malfoy a lesson. But it wasn't until he was ready to implement it. A young man in a blue sweater came out of the carriage not far away. There is also a, P, letter decoration on the blue sweater. What are you guys doing? No fighting is allowed in the carriage. Quote. This man attacked me. Single quote. The villain Malfoy complained first. No, Percy, it was Malfoy who scolded me and Neville first. Ron also stood up and said. He saw his younger brother in the carriage. Percy frowned. Hurry up and leave. The bus will arrive soon. Everyone pack up quickly. Seeing this, Ron could only release the magic with regret. Watching the three of Malfoy flee here in a hurry. Disappeared at the end of the car. Percy, this guy. He's my big brother, yet he won't help me. Ron was a little indignant. It seemed that he was angry that the other party did not punish Malfoy. I'm leaving Braun first, see you later. Neville also left in a hurry, his carriage was farther away. Let's hurry up and change clothes. Don't ignore Ron's chatter when you're done. He pulled the two of them out of the box. Wait until Hermione finishes changing. Only after entering the carriage, changed into the wizard robe. Crackling. There was a harsh friction sound between the train and the rails. Accompanied by the slow stop of the train. Several people finally saw the station outside the window. Freshmen. Freshmen get off the train in an orderly manner. Luggage and pets are placed in the compartment, and someone will bring them to your bedroom later. Several senior wizards in the corridor of the carriage were shouting loudly. Avoid any panic and crowded things to come out. Wait until those senior wizards get off the train. The freshmen just got off the train. Rain, this time has stopped. But the sky still looked gray. There is also some earthy fragrance in the air. It seems to be a little cold outside because of the rain. Everyone couldn't help tightening their robes. First year freshmen, first year freshmen go this way. Some rough voice. Let everyone look away from the quaint station in front of them. The person who came was a tall man who was at least 2.5 meters tall. Tall and unshaven. A coat made of beaver skins was worn on him. There was also a hunting knife hanging from his waist. At this moment, he was walking over with a lantern. My god, is this a giant? Hermione exclaimed. He's Hagrid, the gamekeeper at Hogwarts. Braun replied quietly. Magic can always change a person's body shape, don't always make such a fuss. Braun hadn't mentioned to Hermione that Hagrid was a half-giant. It is disrespectful to Hagrid to say it hastily. Let Hermione find out for herself. Hermione nodded ignorantly. Follow me freshmen. Stop looking around. We have to hurry up or we might be late for the meeting later. Quote. Chatted with those senior students in charge of freshmen. Hagrid carried the lantern and led the crowd from Hogsmeade to Hogwarts. Maybe it was because of the rain. The ground is a little slippery. Plus it was too dark to see the ground clearly. From time to time, a few little wizards fell down. Get muddy all over. Be careful. Braun quickly grabbed Hermione who almost fell down. Thank you Braun. Hermione was startled too. She came here to be a beautiful little witch. I don't want to be covered in mud and water like those little wizards, like a drowned rat. Luminescence flickering. A soft light shone from the tip of Braun's staff. The coverage area is not too large. But enough for Braun to see the ground beneath his feet. He can spell. The little wizards around were very surprised. The eyes that looked at Braun were also full of admiration. Malfoy, who was hiding in the crowd, was filled with resentment. Such a showy thing should be done by him. He is the one who deserves everyone's attention. Hagrid also looked at Braun in a little surprise and muttered a few words. He continued to lead these little wizards towards the Black Lake. Bring it on. Now everyone can choose their own boat. Remember four people a boat. Don't have too many people. Quote. Because the distance is too far. Braun wasn't sitting with Ron and Harry. Instead, he casually boarded the boat with two freshmen he didn't know. There is a bright little light on the bow. Allow students to see the surrounding Black Lake view. At the same time, he also controlled the boat and sailed towards Hogwarts. Some curious young murlocs poked their heads out of the water to watch the newborns. But some old murlocs took it easy and dragged the juniors away. All the students were shocked by the magnificent castle in front of them. Especially those little muggle-born wizards were stuttering and speechless. 
It seems that when I saw these castles, the admiration in my heart unconsciously emerged from my heart. Although they themselves don't know what the reason is. Don't know where to start. The murlocs in the black lake began to sing. The sound is vast and has an ancient flavor. It makes people seem to go back to ancient times. Bron could feel a magical power enter his mind along with the singing. Let the picture of hundreds of years ago appear in front of my eyes. Same as myself at the moment. Those were also four young people in a small boat. They wear robes of different colors. From here arrive at the location of the castle. And established a school there. And the murloc's murky singing gradually became clear and clear in bronze ears. In the days of the beginning of creation. Across the silver sea. Dot dot dot. The charm of war and blood. Dot 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 quote. The singing faded away. And Bron finally reached the shore. The magic power seems to be locked. He felt that the magic power that was originally filled in his body still existed at this moment. But part of it seems to have become a kind of protective magic to protect itself. At this moment he finally understood why all the first years had to go to Hogwarts by boat. It's not just about following in the footsteps of the four founders, remembering bitterness and sweetness, remembering glory. It is also a ritual. After passing this ceremony, everyone will have a protective magic on their bodies. This is what it really means. No wonder the little wizards can easily use it to do what they want before they officially enter school. But after being called a wizard, you can't do it. This is not only because the magic is guided by the wand. It should also be inseparable from this magic. Single quote. Bron, Bron get off the boat. He didn't wait for him to continue thinking. Hermione's voice brought him back to reality. He was stunned, and found that the boat had already docked on the shore. Sorry, Hermione was distracted just now. Hermione understood that very well. Chattering up. You were blown away by that castle too, weren't you Bron? To tell you the truth, the moment I saw Hogwarts, I felt a surge of respect. I don't know why. Quote. Listen to Hermione chattering. Bron felt something was wrong. Isn't it because of the singing? Shock. Hermione, did you hear the murlocs singing? What song? By the way, where are the murlocs? Is it in the Black Lake? Why didn't I see it? Hermione was suspicious at first. Then they went to the edge of the Black Lake and seemed to want to find out where the murlocs were. Seeing Hermione's expression did not seem to be fake. Bron began to hesitate a bit. Was it just my hallucination? But the reduced magic power in the body is real. Come here quickly, we are going to the castle. Hagrid shouted not far away. He greeted the little wizard who had just disembarked not to delay. Let's go too, Bron, don't be late. Hermione also chirped and wanted to see where the murlocs were. Pulling Bron and running towards the team. Following Hagrid, everyone came to the outside of a castle entirely made of white marble. Although the wind and sun made the castle a little dusty. But that kind of heavy sense of history is something new buildings don't have. The little wizard stepped up the steps and followed the spiral staircase to the second floor. The torches on the wall flickered the shadows of the people. A rather old witch wearing a wide-brimmed wizard hat was standing there with a serious face. Behind her is a huge bronze door. Professor McGonagall. Hagrid said hello to the other party. The freshmen are here. Thank you for your hard work along the way, Hagrid. You go ahead and I'll take charge here. Quote. Watching Hagrid walk in through the small door on the side. A few little wizards glanced over there curiously. After finding that there was nothing, he looked back in disappointment. Okay, freshman. I am the vice principal of the school. Minerva McGonagall. He is also the head of Gryffindor. Many of you should know me. Quote. Her eyes flicked to Braun. I hope you will make the school your home for the next seven years. Study hard here. Work hard to become a powerful wizard. Quote. Everyone quietly listened to Professor McGonagall's speech. In this regard, Mag is very satisfied. Okay everyone, just stay here for a while. The next step is to prepare for the sorting ceremony. Quote. Professor McGonagall entered the hall. And the little wizards left behind started talking. Everyone is discussing what they will face later. I hear we'll fight trolls. Ron said worriedly. It made Harry on the side a little worried. But my mum told me we would have exams, tests of our knowledge. By the way, what does the test mean? Quote. The little wizards talked a lot. 
Some pure blood families come from or have a wizarding parent. They are showing off their knowledge at home. And those little muggle born wizards were worried. Braun, will the upcoming assessment be dangerous? I read, a piece of Hogwarts school history, and it seems that there is no relevant record. Quote. Hermione looked extremely worried. At the same time, the nervousness made her even more talkative. Don't worry, we'll just. The words are not finished yet. Professor McGonagall appeared in front of everyone again. The students were photographed in two lines according to their initials. They followed Professor McGonagall to the bronze door that made them worry and yearn at the same time. Crack. The huge bronze door slowly opened. At the same time, the huge auditorium was displayed in front of everyone. White candles float in the air. Torches are placed on various animal headstone carvings on the walls. The whole hall was bright as day. Four huge long tables are placed in the middle of the auditorium. There is only one wide aisle left in the middle. Little wizards in gray wizard robes sat at their respective tables. Looking at these new students curiously. The ceiling of the auditorium is enchanted. The sky outside is clearly visible. Let everyone can't help but be amazed. At the end of the corridor is the professor's seat. Hagrid, who had led the little wizards here, was sitting there. In addition, there are other professors who seem to have their own characteristics. In the middle of these professors, an old man with a white beard was smiling and looking at everyone. Under the half-moon-shaped glasses, there is a pair of light blue eyes with wisdom and vicissitudes. Braun knew that this man was the greatest wizard alive, Dumbledore. And under the teacher's seat, a slightly worn-out hat was placed there on a bench that wasn't too high. The sorting ceremony begins. Dumbledore stood up and announced. Just when everyone was worried about where the giant monster would appear from. The battered hat on the bench moved. Look at the children here. Don't worry about the trolls or anything. My test is the sorting ceremony. Please don't worry now, listening to my story may give you a little understanding of the school. Then the hat wobbled. Mouth also began to sing a song. That was more than a thousand years ago. I was just woven into shape. Dot dot dot. There were four famous wizards. Their names survive to this day. Brave Gryffindor, from the barren swamp. Beautiful Lewen Kellow, from the peaceful riverside. Merciful Hufflepuff, from the wide open. Dot dot dot. I never looked away. I want to see your mind. Find out which academy you belong to. Quote. Everyone is attracted by the singing of the sorting hat. Only Braun looked stiff. Because of the song. Changed. It wasn't the sorting hat's song when Harry Potter entered his first year. It should be sung in the second grade. Don't worry too much Braun, the sorting hat's song is different every year, and the novel is not the same as its own world. Don't worry about it. Single quote. Although Braun comforted himself like this. But he couldn't help but start to worry in his heart. As a traverser. Nothing scares people more than Isji's well-known and fixed plot changes. But soon he was attracted by the sorting ceremony. Now I'm calling my name. Hannah Abbott. Quote. A little girl with blonde hair stumbled and ran over. Almost knocked over the chair. Hufflepuff. The sorting hat quickly announced the result. The other party stumbled again, and ran to Hufflepuff's dining table amidst the cheers of the crowd. There is also a honeypot badge on the wizard robe on the chest. Phew. Not bad. Hannah is still Hufflepuff. Braun breathed a sigh of relief. The so-called Iron Hannah Abbott. The passerby of flowing water. Since the other party hasn't changed. It shows that the plot did not run wild. I can still go to Hogwarts for a few more years. Hermione Granger. It didn't take long for Hermione to come up with the name. Seeing the little girl running up nervously, she sat on the chair. After some tangling, the sorting hat still made a decision. Gryffindor. Hermione ran away happily, sitting at the Gryffindor table. He waved at Braun. Braun hugged and smiled. But I still haven't figured out which college I want to go to. His parents came from Lewenkeluo. Raven's Claw is a good choice for myself. Of course, Gryffindor is also not bad. At least you can see Hermione often when you go there. Shall we go to Gryffindor? Single quote. Braun was thinking. Professor McGonagall called his name. His surname's initials are H which is not so late. Hearing the call, he walked over without hesitation. Sat on the bench. But I was really nervous. He was afraid that the broken hat on his head would shout, Azkaban. Oh, 
Boy, why do you think that? Hogwarts doesn't have a fifth house. The voice of the sorting hat sounded in his mind. I want to go. Braun was about to tell the other party what he thought. Isn't it written in the books of those previous lives? As long as you tell the other party the college you want to go to, the sorting hat will follow your wishes. Slytherin. The sorting hat yelled loudly. Braun was blinded by Professor McGonagall when he took off his hat. I haven't said which college I want to go to. Is this allotted? Looking at the crowd of Slytherins who were cheering. Braun wasn't a good fit, either. Walked over with a smile. Find an empty seat and sit down. From a pure blood family. Braun didn't receive any weird looks. On the contrary, it is a kind greeting from some senior students. After learning of Braun's surname, their eyes became even more eager. Certainly. The opposite of Braun. It's those mixed races. Most of them are sitting in the corner of the table. Even old students are excluded there. Although everyone is at the same table, it seems to be two worlds. In this regard, although Braun also wants to help them. But I also know that he doesn't have this strength yet. The sorting ceremony was soon over. The little wizards are also divided into their own colleges. Not surprisingly, Slytherin has the least number of people, followed by Ravenclaw and Gryffindor, and Hufflepuff is undoubtedly the most. Although the tables were all the same length, the Hufflepuff table was bustling with little wizards. On the other hand, Slytherin seemed much cooler. Hello, I'm Theodore Knott. A tall and thin boy with a thick tongue who was sitting in brawn introduced himself. The boy has blonde hair and looks a little thin. A pair of buck teeth are particularly prominent. It made him look a little dumbfounded. But the shrewdness revealed in his eyes let others know. He has a shrewdness that is completely different from his appearance. Hello, Braun Roll. Braun shook his hand modestly. He didn't intend to just spend the past few years alone in school. It is obviously necessary to make a few friends. The Roll family. I've heard of you. Dolphin Roll is yours. It's my uncle. Braun nodded with a smile. As director of the Department of Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures at the Ministry of Magic. Dolphin still has some reputation. Welcome. Dumbledore stood up. Welcome to Hogwarts, everyone. What I want to say to you is yes. Fool. Cry. Residue. Screw. Thank you all. Quote. It doesn't matter if everyone understands or not. Dumbledore sat down. Many little wizards couldn't help but discuss what this meant. Braun you think that. Short conversations plus parental relationships. It has made two little wizards who were not familiar with each other get acquainted. Rune, former Merlin bless you. Braun said decisively without hesitation. This is the answer he asked his grandmother before school started, and the other party gave him the answer. Several little wizards around heard Braun's explanation. They all looked over with adoring eyes. So did Theodore. I always feel like I don't understand anything. Braun seemed to know a lot. But it didn't take long for everyone to discuss. The dinner party suddenly became lively. Dumbledore tapped the cup in his hand with the silver spoon on the table. Moment. Delicious food appeared on the originally empty dinner plate. Roast beef, roast chicken, pork chops, sausages, potatoes, Yorkshire patches and more. Of course, as a true old Englishman. Of course, looking up to the stars is also indispensable. One with cream in it. Piles with fish heads on top were placed on the table. The white eyes stared blankly at these little wizards with unrepentant eyes. Braun watched with a chill. He casually found a piece of grilled steak and put it on his dinner plate. Dine up. He didn't eat seriously at noon. Just waiting for the dinner party tonight. Unlike Braun's feasting, Ron and Harry at the Gryffindor table lost their appetites. They ate too much at noon. It can be said that since buying snacks, my mouth has never stopped. Plus those snacks are high-calorie sugary chocolates. Now I don't feel any hunger in my stomach at all. Hermione, why don't you eat it? Neville happily ate the tonkatsu in front of him. At the same time, don't forget to give some to your pets. Neville, why did Braun get sorted into Slytherin? I heard that the wizards there are not very nice people. Hermione looked at Braun, who was posing elegantly at the Slytherin table. Asked worriedly. The joy that made her enter Gryffindor was diluted a lot. Isn't this normal? Roll's family is also pure blood, anyway, their family is either Law and Crow or Slytherin. Neville said indifferently. He didn't see Braun's entry into Slytherin as anything. 
There are a lot of bad guys out there though. But there are also many good people. For example, Madame Pomfrey in the school infirmary is also a Slytherin. Although there is Neville's explanation. But not so good impression of Slytherin. Hermione still couldn't turn around for a moment. It's all your fault for going to Slytherin. Smash you. Smash you. While muttering, the fork in his hand kept poking the steak on the plate. Ah Chu. Braun sneezes. Looked around. I always feel like someone is talking bad about me. Look at the muttering Malfoy again. Well, it must be this guy. Thinking of him waving his wand lightly. Let a roast chicken on the table come to life. Two thighs ran on the table again. Jumping to Malfoy amid the exclamation of everyone. The whole chicken hung over Malfoy's head like a mask. Crab and Goyle struggled to pull Malfoy out. It made the little wizards around laugh. Who? Who? Malfoy yelled angrily. It's just that the people around just laughed but didn't respond. Braun roll. Is that you? Malfoy looked at the wand in Braun's hand, although he was doubtful, but he was already sure in his heart. Braun slowly withdrew his wand. Do you have any evidence? You are slandering people's innocence out of thin air. You are shameless. You. Malfoy jumped angrily. But knowing that he couldn't beat the opponent, he could only stare at Braun with angry eyes. Viciously biting the roast chicken that had been chopped into pieces. Seems to be taking it as Braun. The little snakes talked a lot. It seemed that he hadn't thought that Braun could use magic. There was also admiration in the gaze towards Braun. Braun, are you using magic? Transfiguration. Theodore couldn't help asking. The buck teeth also grinned. No, it's soul magic, although it's somewhat similar to transfiguration. But the two are still different. Quote. Soul magic. Theodore grunted. It's from my family. Braun said with a smile. Sure enough, after hearing that this magic is a family tradition. Theodore wisely didn't ask any more questions. But I couldn't help but marvel at Braun in my heart. At least he himself couldn't use magic so proficiently. Teacher's seat. Some teachers have also spotted the chaos from Slytherin. It's just that everyone didn't care. This is nothing more than a joke between students and students. The teacher will naturally not intervene. Snape, who didn't see it as the dean, just pretended not to see it. Of course this does not affect the protagonists of their discussion time. That is the child attended by role at St. Mungo's Hospital. Professor Flitwick asked curiously. I don't think he's using transfiguration. Yes. Soul witchcraft. It's just that I didn't expect that kid Braun to practice it to this extent. His father was just able to use this magic to appease some mentally traumatized patients. Quote. Professor McGonagall said. It's just that there is some pity in the tone. It seemed to be a pity that Braun didn't go to Gryffindor. The professors lamented the passage of time while drinking wine. It's just that everyone didn't see the surprise when Professor Sybil Trelawney in the corner looked at Braun. Okay, it looks like everyone has eaten enough. Watching the food on the table start to fade away. Some young wizards who still felt that it was not enough quickly reached out and took a lot. Grab it before all the food is gone. Dumbledore stood up from the teacher's seat. The white beard is very long and hangs straight to the chest. The auditorium, which was still noisy, became quiet as Dumbledore got up. All eyes were on the old wizard. I have something to say to you all, um. I should have put it before eating. It's just that I'm afraid that everyone just thinks about eating and is not willing to listen to me, an old man. Quote. Dumbledore blinked mischievously. Some little wizards couldn't help laughing kindly. After joking, Dumbledore went on to talk about business. First of all, first-year students need to pay attention. Students are prohibited from entering the woods in the school. There are many very dangerous creatures inside. If you don't want to meet them, it's best not to go in. Quote. Even though he was talking about freshmen, he gave the Weasley brothers a warning look. Let the two of them laugh for a while, looking a little embarrassed. Also, Mr. Filch, the administrator of the school, asked me to tell you. Don't play around in the hallway and use those magic props and magic. Otherwise, you will be arrested and imprisoned. Quote. Filch, who was sitting in the staff seat, had a gloomy face. A skinny cat followed at his feet. It looks a little scary. And, of course, the inclusion of our Quidditch players. Dumbledore continued. Mrs. Huo Chi on the side also stood up. Bow to everyone. 
Eligible sophomores can come to my office the second week of the semester to sign up. Of course, remember to contact the captain of your house's Quidditch team beforehand. Quote. After speaking, Mrs. Hayauchi sat back in her seat again. Seeing some second-year students discussing, Dumbledore did not interrupt. Instead, he waited until the entire auditorium fell silent again before making a sound again. Finally, the most important thing. That is, don't go to the corridor on the right-hand side at the corner on the fourth floor. It's very dangerous there. Quote. Then there was no explanation. Then he took everyone to sing the school song together. Ron, do you think the principal is joking? Theodore looked a little frightened. But Malfoy, who was not far from them, looked very proud. Don't worry, it must be the principal who came to scare the students. Could it be that he can also raise a 4x magical creature in the castle? My dad is the principal of the school. This is definitely impossible. Looking at the other party's proud look. Ron suppressed a smile. I don't know what Malfoy's expression would be if he really found out that there was a huge three-headed dog there. He thought that must be fun. Hogwarts, Hogwarts, Hogwarts. Looking at the stiff faces of those professors. Braun sang louder. Only he didn't use the tune of the funeral march. That's very inauspicious. He is having a good day. Teach us knowledge. Whether we are bald old men. Or a child with a broken knee. Our minds can take some interesting things. Looking at those classmates who were led astray by him, Braun couldn't help but smile. Especially when he saw those little snakes suspicious of life, he laughed more and more happily. Because now our brains are empty, full of air, dead flies, and trivial things. Teach us some valuable knowledge. Give us back what we have forgotten. Just do your best and leave the rest to us. We will study hard until we are reduced to dust. A song is over. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Especially those professors, the school song at the beginning of each year is simply torture for them. There is only one exception. Dumbledore wiped away the tears from the corners of his eyes. It was so inspiring. To be honest, the tone this time is much more cheerful than previous years. This makes me very relieved. Quote. Braun smiled sheepishly at the Slytherin table. Dumbledore didn't delve into the matter either. Okay everyone, it's getting late now. Hope you all had a great evening at Hogwarts. Quote. A crowd full of food and drink. Under the leadership of the prefect. Walked towards the outside of the auditorium. Meanwhile Braun hadn't forgotten to say hello to Hermione. It's just that the inherent contradictions between the little lion and the little snake made neither of them dare to go too far. Let's go. Prefect Marcus Fu Linte said proudly. He looked like a general who had won a battle. The Slytherins were the first to leave proudly. The Gryffindor prefects looked at each other with a livid face. It seems that they are very concerned about who leaves the order first. As for Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff, they are two salted fish. At this moment, the colleges of their colleges are still chatting at the dining table. Some little badgers followed the senior schoolmates to Lowen Keluo's dining table and talked with the little eagles about the location of their respective lounges. Left the auditorium. Braun walked underground with the other little snakes under the leadership of the prefect. It is somewhat different from the other three colleges. The common room in Slytherin House is the deepest. This is where the castle used to hold prisoners. It's just that the school was established here with the four founders including Slytherin. The dungeon has also been converted into a lounge. Charles Slytherin voluntarily assigned the worst lounge to his students. Certainly. That was a long time ago. Now under the donation of generations of pure-blood wizards. It is no exaggeration to say that Slytherin is the most luxurious lounge in the whole school. After all, compared to being rich, who can compare to pure blood? Go down the stone ladder. Both sides of the walls are beautifully wallpapered. Expensive magic lamps are randomly placed on both sides of the wall. Right in front of it is a huge stone gate. It seemed ordinary, but when the little wizard stepped forward, a portrait of an old man with a gloomy face emerged. Old man dressed in medieval aristocratic clothing. Rings of gemstones of various colors are worn on the fingers with huge knuckles. Like Gryffindor, this is the gatekeeper of Slytherin. It's just that it's a little different from the simple portrait of Gryffindor. It seems to be connected with Shimon. The gatekeepers of the four colleges are different. Gryffindor relies on portraits. The eyes of the whole castle are arguably the most well-informed. 
Raven Clow is the handle of the Bronze Eagle. Wanting to go in is only recognized by wisdom. Hufflepuff gatekeepers are more kitchen house elves than barrels. Their grandparents are the benefactors of the founder Lady Hufflepuff. Treat all Hufflepuffs with kindness. And the gatekeeper of Slytherin. It is this stone gate. Although with bronze superficial knowledge, it is impossible to judge how this stone door disappeared and appeared. But he could feel that it was a great alchemy item. In terms of sturdiness, it can be said that it is the strongest of the four colleges. No one was afraid of the sudden appearance of the portrait. They are all pure blood, so of course they still have knowledge. I have seen similar magical portraits at home. Only those mixed races couldn't help but scream. But under the scornful gazes of other purebloods, they fell silent again. The expression is with embarrassment. Password. The gloomy old man had no intention of talking to them. Marcus replied respectfully. Purebred. Immediately afterwards, the stone gate became transparent. After everyone filed in, they resurfaced behind them. Braun couldn't help but be amazed. The entry code to the academy changes every week. Of course, even if you forget, don't worry. Sir Cadogan will be able to tell if you are a student of the house or not. Of course, I don't really recommend that you do this. Because if you forget the password many times, Sir Cadogan will report to the master. Believe me that's definitely not a good thing. Quote. See the prefect so serious. The little snakes also nodded seriously. They had already seen the dean of their own family under the instructions of the seniors and sisters. Honestly, it's scary. See these freshmen are honest. Prefect Marcus was very satisfied. Then began to talk about other rules. Braun wasn't listening. Instead, he looked at the lounge with curiosity. The lounge is the same color as the coat of arms on Braun's wizard robes. The main body is green. A huge college coat of arms banner was hung above the fireplace. It looked extraordinarily dazzling against the backdrop of the fire. Especially the silver snake eyes stitched with gold thread give people a feeling as if they are alive. There are several sofas in front of the fireplace. You can tell just by looking at the dark red leather. They are not young. To the right of the sofa are some bookshelves and a bulletin board. There is nothing in it because I just started school. Only a portrait of the deputy dean is placed there. It's just that the person in the portrait has left. It seems that they don't know where to drop by. On the left side of the sofa is a whole side of glass. Through the glass Braun could see many murlocs looking inside curiously. Some even knocked on the glass to greet them. This reminded Braun of the hallucinations he encountered in the Black Lake. That's not a nice experience. Those are Black Lake mermaids. They are close relatives of mermaids. But don't worry, they are kind and have a contract with the school that won't hurt you. If you fall into the Black Lake unfortunately, they will help you. Quote. Everyone's eyes were attracted by the huge glass wall. Marcus also explained to everyone. In addition to murlocs, Black Lake also has giant squid. You can go around there. I saw the little wizards yawning loudly. Marcus also knew they were tired. After all, these first-year students are not very old. Plus a day of driving. So I no longer tell everyone about those rules. Started to take those boys to their assigned dormitories. As for the girls, another female prefect is in charge. Braun Roll, Theodore Knott, Blaise Chabini. Well, this is your dormitory. Quote. Standing in a room, the former prefect Marcus said. The three thanked the prefect for a while. Then he entered the dormitory. Dormitories are somewhat similar to halls. The walls are also made of glass. It's just that there are curtains to block it. There are three four-poster beds in the room. With a typical medieval style. Pure white silk runs from the top of the bed to the bottom of the bed. The privacy of each little wizard is guaranteed. Three long wooden tables are placed on the other side for everyone to do their homework. On the other side is the bathroom. Everyone's luggage is piled under their respective beds. The silk drapery of each bed has its own name tattooed in silver thread. Dumb. Clever Tom threw himself out of the cage long ago. Standing on a hanger in the room at the moment showing off to Braun. Is this your pet brawn? Theodore asked curiously. He didn't bring any pets. After all, it is still very troublesome to raise. Yes, it's called Tom. As he spoke, he took out the food in the suitcase that he bought at the pet store before school started. The grain is said to keep pets from shedding hair. And make their bones stronger. Dumb. 
Is this TM eaten by crows? Looking at the pet food kicked over by the opponent, Braun fell into deep thought. Then take out a pack of beef jerky. Watching Tom eat happily. Sure enough, fried chicken and cola are really healthy. Braun didn't mean to force Tom either. Anyway, he hadn't heard of magical creatures that ate and died of malnutrition. This is as ridiculous as a dragon being scared to death by a cattail. It's just a pity for the food. Forget it, turn back to Neville's rifle. That golden-backed toad looked dumbfounded because it shouldn't be picky eaters. Quote. Feed Tom. Braun also went to the bathroom to wash up. After a tiring day, the three of them had nothing to chat with. They all fell on the big soft bed embroidered with, pure blood supreme. Dot dot dot. Early morning. Braun got up early. This is a habit he developed at home. After all, what could compare to signing in in the morning? Ding. The current sign in location, Hogwarts, Slytherin House. Receive exclusive academy sign in rewards. Basics of potion science. Immediately afterwards, various basic herbal medicine knowledge and some simple potion formulas appeared in Braun's mind. Sure enough, the sign in reward for coming to Hogwarts is great. Braun praised sincerely. It's just that he didn't quite understand what this exclusive meant. Ding. The host has currently selected a college, so it is not possible to sign in with other college-specific rewards. Single quote. The systematic explanation made Braun a little regretful. After all, he still wants to sign with the four colleges. Now it seems to be out of play. But shouldn't Slytherin's sign in reward be parcel tongue? Why potions? Ding. Each of the four colleges has a different focus. Exclusive rewards are selected according to the deans of the four colleges. The basis of potions comes from Snape, the head of Slytherin. Single quote. It dawned on Braun. At the same time, I have a deeper understanding of the four colleges. The reckless wizards of Gryffindor like to take risks, and for adventures, transfiguration is undoubtedly the greatest. Not to mention that Professor McGonagall is one of the eight Animagus certified by the Ministry of Magic today. Strong strength, even Snape is no match. If there is anything that can impress the knowledge-hungry eagles, it is undoubtedly the vast array of magic spells. As the Dean of the Eagle Academy, Professor Flitwick is the champion of magic duels in the entire European continent. Except for Dumbledore, no one in the whole school can surpass him in familiarity with spells. The hard-working little badgers are taught by Professor Sprout. The cultivation of herbs is a matter that requires a lot of patience. Except for Little Badger, no academy could bear that loneliness. As for the Snake House, potion science is known as the science of Krypton Gold. If you want to learn, you can't do without the support of Jin Jilong. And for these rich and status-seeking purebloods. Undoubtedly the most suitable. Even those famous masters of potions are all pure-blooded. In potion science, the pure-blooded gallon was the biggest advantage. Not bad, at least don't worry about Snape's old bat making things difficult for me. Braun muttered to himself. Although Snape was very kind to everyone in the academy, basically he would not deduct points. But there are still cases of being poisoned because the potion is not refined well. He didn't want to be scolded by the old bat pointing his nose. Shish, don't talk Tom, they're still sleeping. Braun whispered to an excited Tom. Tom flapped his wings and landed on Braun's shoulder, and gently pecked at Braun's hair with his yellow beak. At the same time, a piece of yellow parchment was thrown into Braun's hand. This is. Looking at the contents on the parchment, Braun was a little dazed. This is my class schedule for this week. I didn't expect to be put next to the bed. Well, let me see. Hogwarts first year curriculum. Charms and potions in the morning. No stargazing class in the afternoon. Quote. There are three classes a day, which is indeed a bit easy, and Braun is not used to it. Still, it's good to be free. I can also have more time and energy to focus on alchemy. Wizards are not omnipotent. Magic is vast. No one can specialize in everything, even Dumbledore is good at it. I hope the system can extract the knowledge of alchemy for me as soon as possible. If I really learn it by myself, I'm afraid I'll be exhausted. Braun muttered to himself. After washing up, he took Tom and left the dormitory. It was very quiet in the corridor. The same goes for the common room. Only the firewood in the stove kept crackling and burning. You were an early child. A hoarse voice caught Braun's attention. 
It was a skinny ghost, and the gown on his body was stained with blood stains. A hunting knife, also stained with blood, hung from his waist. It looks scary. Braun is no stranger to the ghost in front of him. He met at the dinner yesterday. A ghost of Slytherin, whose exact name has been forgotten. Known as the Bloody Baron by other young wizards. Of course, within Slytherin, he will still be honored as a knight. Good morning sir. I'm just getting into the habit of liking the early hours. Although I don't know why the blood man Barrow called himself. But he still answered the other party's question respectfully. Bloody Barrow's eyes were a little dull, as if he was lost in thought. I don't know if I heard Bronze words. Waited for a while and saw that the other party didn't mean to speak. Braun didn't stop there either, and was about to leave the lounge. I smell an evil spirit on you, someone is watching you. Be careful. Remember. Braun, who was standing in front of the stone gate, paused. Looking back, the bloody borrow on the sofa had long since disappeared. It's inexplicable. Is Hogwarts full of Riddlers like this? Braun muttered something. Out of here. It was indeed a bit early for Braun to wake up. This is for Hogwarts where classes start at 9 o'clock. During this period of time, the little wizards are still immersed in sleep. Looking at the deserted castle, Braun didn't feel alone. Instead, enjoy this rare tranquility. Hi Professor. Braun respectfully greeted the very plain Launu Wu who was wearing a huge robe. The witch was a little surprised by Braun's appearance. But after taking a serious look at Braun, he felt a little happy. Are you Braun Roll? Braun was a little dazed, he didn't seem to have seen this witch before. I am your great aunt, Sybil Wontrelani. Your grandmother wrote to me. Hearing the other party's explanation, Braun suddenly understood. The other party's outfit was really different from what he saw yesterday. No bells and whistles. Let him not recognize it for a while. Okay, come with me, kid. You got up too early and there is no breakfast at this time. Sybil Trelawney greeted Braun warmly. Before Braun could refuse, he was dragged up to the tower of another castle. To be honest, it was really tiring for him. Climbing up to the seventh floor in one breath was a bit too strenuous for his young judge. Do you need some tea? This is the tea that was really transported from the ancient east. Sitting on a chair, he looked at the small attic in front of him and the excited Professor Trelawney. It made Braun feel a little strange. Because it was a bit different from the liar fortune teller he had imagined. The other party did not speak to himself in a trance and ethereal tone. He didn't say anything to himself, young man, I see that your seal is black, there must be disasters, yes, you are going to burp. Single quote. And kindly poured tea for himself and handed himself the pie he brought. Thank you, Professor, er, great aunt. He felt that this title was a bit strange. But since it was requested by the other party, Braun naturally couldn't refuse. Are you learning your grandmother's astrology? One pie was eaten. Professor Trelawney couldn't help asking. Um, not really. In fact, I only learned the soul magic inherited from the Luoer family. And in the future, I plan to develop in the direction of alchemy. Quote. This is not something worth hiding. Every wizard has his own research goals. In Braun's opinion, it is better to practice alchemy than to learn those illusory divinations. After all, divination is something that even wizards feel metaphysical. In addition to having the blood of a prophet, there must be a series of other conditions. More importantly, even if you can see the future, you can't change it. This is simply sadder than not being able to predict the future. Soul magic and alchemy. Braun, you shouldn't waste your talent. You have the blood of the great prophet Cassian della Trelawney. L. That's only half the story. Trelawney smiled bitterly as if thinking of something. As if mocking himself, he said. It's good that you can figure it out. At least I won't be entangled in the so-called blood for life like me. I've spent my whole life on illusory prophecies. Quote. Looking at Trelawney, who looked sullen. Braun was also very surprised. You must know that this is a ruthless person who would rather divorce her husband in order to keep his surname. He thought that his words would arouse the other party's anger. Never thought Trelawney would look like this. I don't have your grandmother's talent, and I'm too greedy. I always want to learn everything and end up learning nothing well. I wasted half my life. Braun sat there not knowing how to enlighten his great aunt. Who knew that the other party waved his hand. 
Throw him a book made of wolfbane turf paper. The cover of the book has an eye drawn in dragon's blood. It seems to mean peeking into the fog of the future with eyes. This is a real fortune teller's inheritance book, which contains divinations about crystal balls and tarot cards. Maybe you can try to learn it too. Quote. Without waiting for Braun to say anything more, he waved his wand to drive him out. Standing in the corridor, looking at the book in his hand, Braun didn't know what to say. I thought Trelawney was a crazy old hag. Who knows that people are very sober. Not only that, but also gave him a book about the fortune teller's inheritance. This really made him not know what to say. Gratitude. Perhaps more complicated. Knowledge is the most precious thing in the magic world. It is not small that the other party can give me a share of this friendship so easily. Although this may be for the sake of my grandmother. Forget it, take one step at a time. Put the book away. Braun then ran downstairs along the stairs. It was almost 8 o'clock when I came out. This tower is not a short distance from the main castle. It takes at least half an hour to run there. If you don't hurry up and go to class right away, you might be late. Being late on the first day is not a good thing. As he thought about it, his steps became faster. The potions classroom is on the left-hand side on the fifth floor. After returning to the common room to finish the book of charms. Braun ran towards the fifth floor without any hesitation. But sometimes the more you want to get something done as quickly as possible. Then there will always be some accidents in the process that make the result a little unsatisfactory. Like those moving stairs right now. They seemed to realize that Braun was going to be late. So I started to make trouble on purpose. Shet. Braun snarled. He didn't have time to play games with these stairs. The cold pine wand at his waist was pulled out. Do not forget to say the mantra while waving. Forbidden spirit seizes soul. A beam of light with a faint blue halo shot towards the stairs. Then the stairs that were still moving suddenly froze. It was as if the gears in motion were stuck. Immediately after that, the section of stairs that Braun was on returned to its original position. Braun jumped on it without the slightest hesitation. Go to the fifth floor of the castle. And the restored staircase was at the moment Braun jumped up to the fifth floor. Once again, it returned to its original state and began to change continuously. It's still too exhausting. Braun's face turned pale. Stairs are not so easy to control, know that everything in the castle is one. The magic of Braun is nothing compared to this castle that has been built for thousands of years. The short-lived control is also the result of Braun's hard work. Hurry up and go to class. Without hesitation, Braun ran towards the charms classroom with the book in his arms. Sorry teacher, I'm a little late. Standing at the door Braun said apologetically to Professor Flitwick standing on the book. Oh, take it easy kid. There is no class yet. Find a place to sit down. Quote. Professor Flitwick said kindly. It can be seen that he has a good temper. Scan around the classroom. His two roommates were sitting at the back and waved to him gently as if to signal him to go over. And Hermione was sitting there all by herself in the seat on the right. There is no need to hesitate at all. Braun sat next to Hermione with the book in his arms. What's the matter? Looks a little sullen. Braun couldn't help pinching Hermione's little face. It made the other party stare at him angrily. But soon, he fell down in front of the table as if discouraged. I feel like my roommates don't like me very much. Hermione's tone was a little disappointed. At the same time there is depression. Oh. Braun raised an eyebrow in surprise. However, after thinking that the other party only has two friends, Ron and Harry, in the original book, it seems that he can understand that the other party seems to be not so popular among girls. Otherwise, there would be no one around her sitting alone without herself. It seems that he met Braun, a familiar friend. Hermione finally had someone to confide in after holding back her words all night. I chatted with them last night. Talk about some magic knowledge. But they don't seem to be that interested. And, seems very bored with what I'm talking about. Quote. Braun couldn't help laughing at the distressed look of the girl. What are you laughing at? Hermione asked fiercely. It means that if you don't tell the reason, I will cry for you. Let Braun quickly apologize to the other party. You're going in the wrong direction Hermione. Not all wizards are that fond of magic. Even those children from pure blood families teach their children magic knowledge is only a minority. 
so they are no different from normal muggle-born children. If you really wanted to make some more friends maybe you could talk to them about weird sisters. Or other singers in the magic world. Compared with the knowledge in the book, they may prefer those. Quote. But isn't chasing stars a waste of time? Hermione said hesitantly. So it depends on your choice. If you want to find a few very good girlfriends, then you need to try to accept what they are interested in. But if it's just roommates with a good relationship, what do you want? Hermione asked impatiently. Braun knew that Hermione didn't seem to be planning to find any girlfriends anymore. Then just pretend to listen when they talk and nod from time to time to show that you are listening carefully. Then when they are talking about something, pretend to be interested, praise or ask them about those things. This will give them a sense of accomplishment. Over time, it will naturally have a good relationship with you. Quote. Braun spread his hands. It seems to make sense. Hermione's eyes lit up. As a high school student with high IQ. After thinking about Braun's method for a while, she could feel that it was very feasible. To be honest, I regret it a little. If I went to pull Wen Keluo in the first place. Do not. Braun shook his head. All colleges are the same. Even though the eaglets say they love knowledge, they also love to play. Academy is just a label for founders. That doesn't mean students. I can see Hermione, you have the bravery of a lion, and you're a better fit for Gryffindor than Ravencraw. Quote. Hermione was a little shy at Braun's compliment. Asked abruptly. How do you know? Uh, since you didn't listen to the teacher at the school, you asked your parents to go to Diagon Alley. Dot dot dot. Braun grinned and rubbed his arm. I was just kidding myself. Then I thought that Hermione, a tiger girl, was so serious. Hey, don't be angry. Braun tentatively poked at the other's arm. But Hermione just snorted coldly. He was as angry as Neville's raffle and didn't speak. Put on a look of, I'm cold and don't talk to me. Of course, it might be more real if you ignore the small eyes that keep turning to Braun. Professor Flitwick, who was standing on the podium, showed his aunt's smile. Interested in Braun's little squabble with Hermione. But after seeing that it was time for class. Still stood up conscientiously. Okay, kids, it's time for class. Please take out, standard spells, elementary. In this lesson we learn. The words are not finished yet. Ron and Harry hurried in from outside. It looked a little embarrassed. Sorry professor. We're late. Ron and Harry hastily confessed. It's not a good thing to be late on the first day. Professor Flitwick said seriously. Okay, kids, go back to your seats. I hope you will be on time for your next class. Quote. He kindly blamed the two of them. Then let Harry and Ron sit back in their seats. Then let's continue today's class. Professor Flitwick continued. Charms is a vast subject. Seriously, even though I've said this a million times and say it every year, I'm going to take the trouble to tell you guys at this point. You should pay tribute to the author of our textbook, Ms. Miranda Gosak. To know when I was in school. Charm's lessons are not as simple and clear as they are now. Books are full of complicated explanations and esoteric concepts, which are difficult to understand. This situation has only improved thanks to the, Standard Spells, series of textbooks written specifically for Hogwarts by Ms. Miranda Goshawk more than 70 years ago. So I hope that while you are studying, you will not forget the contribution this great lady has made for you. Quote. While speaking, Professor Flitwick picked up the textbook. Pointing to the kind old witch in the book, he said. After some ideological education, Professor Flitwick began today's formal lecture. Okay everyone, let's learn the first spell today. A very useful spell in normal times. Fluorescent spell. Now can anyone tell me the incantation for this spell? Quote. Looking at the group of little wizards with their heads down. Professor Flitwick's face remained unchanged. But after seeing Hermione with her hands raised high, he felt a little relieved. Originally, he thought there would be no one there. Then, good classmate, please answer. The spell is Lumos. Professor. Hermione replied without hesitation. When she was at home, she had already previewed early. Very good. That's right, boy, your name is. Hermione Granger. Glancing at the Gryffindor crest on Hermione's robes. Professor Flitwick raised his hand. Very good. Miss Granger. Ten points to Gryffindor. This is a reward for your bravery and for answering the correct questions. 
Quote. Thank you, Professor. Hermione smiled sweetly at Professor Flitwick. Then he lifted his chin proudly at Braun. Braun couldn't help laughing a little. He didn't expect Hermione to have such a cute side. Miss Granger has already answered the spell, so let's try it. Professor Flitwick was talking. The magic wand in his hand waved lightly. Fluorescent flickering. The tip of the wand glows white. But everyone didn't seem to be overly surprised. Just with some curious look. Some looked disappointed. It seems that magic is somewhat different from what they imagined. Professor Flitwick could see the expressions of the students. But he didn't care. Although the fluorescent spell is simple. But it is not so easy to be able to display success. Especially for these little wizards who are new to magic. Later, this group of young wizards will know the difficulty of the fluorescent spell. And let go of the contempt in your heart. Look at my movements, my hands are shaking. With the spell. Read it with me. Luminescent flickering. The students held their wands and chanted spells listlessly. Others just can't wait to try it out. Ron is one of them. Why didn't Professor Flitwick hurry up and let us try that with such a simple spell? My god, we've been waving our wands for about 10 minutes. To be honest, I was so dumb like this. Quote. Ron complained softly to Harry. Harry didn't say anything though. But maybe I thought so too. It doesn't feel like this spell is that difficult. Okay, let's practice on our own. Professor Flitwick had already read the minds of the students. Dang even drew all the curtains in the room, making the entire classroom dark. It is convenient for students to try in the future. Fluorescent flickering. Fluorescence flickering. Single quote. Fluorescence flickering. Single quote. Single quote dot 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 single quote. With the permission of the professor. The little wizards couldn't wait to try it. Just different from what they imagined. This seemingly simple spell is not as simple as it seems. Many little wizards tried many times. But still haven't been able to have a success. Hermione waved her wand in distress. She learned some spells during the summer vacation. For example the restoration charm. It's just that the fluorescent spell was too simple so I didn't learn it. Unexpectedly, this seemingly simple spell does not seem to be so simple. Nice job. Professor Flitwick said happily. The tip of bronze wand was lit up. And it's not the kind of faint light, but the kind of dazzling light ball. It seems that you have contacted beforehand, Mr. Roll. Yes Professor, I previewed the textbook during the summer vacation. Braun was not arrogant, but explained the matter calmly. Well, that's still pretty good. Professor Flitwick praised. For this reason I. Before Professor Flitwick finished speaking, Hermione beside Braun also successfully cast the luminescence charm. Although the light on the tip of her staff is very, very faint. If it wasn't for the fact that the room was too dark to even notice. But it still pleased Professor Flitwick. Miss Granger. Very good. It seems that we have one more person to add points to. So. Slithering a 10. 5 points to Gryffindor. Quote. The little wizards around all showed expressions of envy and admiration. Especially the little snakes are asking who Braun is. After knowing the other party's identity, his expression became even more admirable. Only Malfoy in the corner was a little aggrieved. Always felt like this Braun guy stole his limelight. While thinking about how to deal with Braun, a good idea suddenly flashed in his mind. He laughed a little smugly. Crab and Goyle next to him were a little confused. Really? This spell is obviously very simple. Ron waved his wand a little angrily. I saw the tip of the staff light up. But it hasn't waited for him to be happy. The white light suddenly exploded. It wasn't until Professor Flitwick opened the curtain that everyone found out. The originally red-haired Ron was completely black. The red curly hair on the head has also turned black. How miserable and miserable that must be. And Harry sitting next to him wasn't much better. Glasses turned black. Although the whole face was not as miserable as Harry's, it wasn't much better either. Look at these miserable two people. Many little wizards couldn't help laughing. Even Professor Flitwick was confused by the scene and didn't know what to say. Well, I think, boy, you'd better go wash your face now. Dot dot dot. The charm class was over in one and a half hours. Then everyone hurried back to their lounges to get crucibles, dragon leather gloves and other equipment. Braun also briefly separated from Hermione. Braun, you are really amazing. 
I've practiced for a lesson and haven't used luminosity yet. Quote. Theodore couldn't help saying as he walked beside Braun. Braun was honored to be able to cast the spell on him. And Zabini on the side was also very excited. Only he wasn't excited about Braun casting the spell but about Ron's explosion. Cool. Did you guys see that explosion? Really interesting. Of course, it would be better if you don't blacken your face. Quote. Ron, who was going upstairs beside him, turned even darker when he heard it. Although the face was washed, the burnt hair was not so easy to change back. So he's going to have to live with this curly hair all morning. It put him in a very bad mood. Harry wasn't much better either. Although the glasses were repaired by Professor Flitwick. But he preferred not to be fixed. Now his face is dark except for the skin around his eyes which is relatively white. It makes him kind of like a raccoon with glasses. Looking at the two people who rushed upstairs angrily. Braun couldn't help laughing too. The three stood in the corridor and laughed. It caused a lot of people to look sideways. I think there is something wrong with these three little wizards. Let's go back and get our stuff. It's the dean's class later, so you don't want to be late. Quote. Sabini and Theodore also became serious. He hurried downstairs. The potions classroom is above the Slytherin common room. Located on the basement level. Further up is the lounge for the little badgers. Compared to the Slytherin lounge. Although the potions classroom was on the basement floor, it looked even darker. The moment Braun entered the classroom. The slightly pungent herbal smell lingered in his nostrils along the air. Alcohol lamps are neatly placed on the table. Various glass jars are placed around the classroom. The pale yellow formalin in the bottle soaks various plant and animal organs. People who don't know may think that this is the laboratory of some Frankenstein. Because the lounge is relatively close to the classroom. Braun was the first to snatch a long table with a good position. There are two iron shelves placed on the long table, which seem to be places for placing crucibles. The basic knowledge of potions that he checked in in the morning gave Braun an instant sense of familiarity when he saw these things. He put on his gloves and easily arranged the magical plants on the table. Put the crucible on the shelf again, light the alcohol lamp and skillfully let the flame remove the paraffin wax used to prevent rust from the crucible. Finally turn on the tap on the table to clean it. After doing all this, Braun realized that the classroom seemed a little too quiet. Look up. I saw Snape was standing not far away looking at himself. The other little wizards looked at him with reverence without saying a word. Um, I'm sorry, Professor. I just think the newly purchased crucible needs some work. Quote. Braun said with some embarrassment. At the same time, facing the old bat, I couldn't help feeling a little nervous. Who knows if Snape will give himself a bad tongue. Malfoy, who was sitting on the other side, also smiled. He couldn't wait to watch Braun being scolded by Snape. It's just that things don't seem to be as he thought. Although Snape didn't smile, he didn't mean to criticize either. Instead, he asked. You taught yourself this. As a potions master, he could still see the rustiness of Braun's methods. That's why I asked like this. Um, yes. I've read books on cleaning and care of cauldrons. The book said that only by properly handling the crucible can the smooth refining of potions be ensured and the success rate increased. Quote. Braun said without blushing that the memory given by the system was his own efforts. Snape nodded. There was some appreciation in his eyes. You are very good. Mr. Roll. Many people have overlooked the importance of the crucible. As a freshman, you can think of this, which means that you have really studied hard. Five points for Slytherin. In class now. Quote. After speaking, he walked onto the podium. The door that was originally open also closed with a bang. All the little wizards looked at Braun in disbelief and at Snape in trepidation. Malfoy was so angry that he was about to grit his teeth. This Nima Braun delays everyone's extracurricular time, you just give him extra points if you don't stop it. He felt that his heart had been severely hit. It's just that Snape didn't care about his cheap godson. His cold gaze swept across the audience. He spoke without a trace of emotion. Potions are a complex subject for many wizards. I don't expect you to really appreciate the beauty of the slow simmering cauldron with white smoke and fragrance. You don't really understand that liquid that flows into people's veins, that magical power that makes the heart sway and the mind bewildered. Because these are too difficult. 
No one but really gifted wizards can read the fun in it. Quote. As he spoke, his always gloomy face also showed some intoxication. But soon the intoxication disappeared. It was replaced by that cold expression. Potions are an easy path to success. Of course, this is only for those who are really talented. Even if you can't become a real potions master. But as long as you have a good level of potions, you can still live well in the wizarding world. Both Garen and status are so easy to get. Quote. Snape's words excited the little snakes. If one of the four colleges is more eager for money and power. Then Slytherin is undoubtedly the well-deserved number one. The little snakes were completely overwhelmed by the bright future that Snape described. Everyone is gearing up to study hard later, and then become the new master of potions. As for the little lions, they didn't seem to regard this boiled potion as profound magic. Looking sullen and feeling more decadent than in Flitwick's class. Of course, this may also have something to do with Snape's gloomy look. At this time, Snape's cold eyes seemed to have finally noticed the figure that he hated but also pitied. Seeing Snape's sudden change of expression, Braun knew it. It was the other party who discovered Harry. Sure enough, at the same time as Braun was thinking. Snape's cold voice came again. Perhaps some of you think that with a little fame you can do whatever you want in school. But what I want to say is that he was wrong. Quote. Ron quickly pushed Harry, who didn't know what he was writing, to let the other party do it quickly. But even so, Snape didn't seem to intend to let go. His face was somewhat gloomy Harry Potter. With some intriguing inquiries. So Mr. Potter, can you tell me what you were doing? Harry Potter, who was stared at by Snape, looked a little embarrassed. Nervously said, Teacher, I'm taking notes. Harry looked very nervous, he was indeed taking notes just now. But it's not the notes of Potions class, but the notes of Professor Flitwick's Charms class. Oh, really? It seems that our Mr. Harry is easy to learn. Snape smiled maliciously. He waved his palm lightly and didn't see him chanting any spells. Harry's notebook flew into his hands. And the above content also made his already gloomy expression even uglier. Nothing makes one teacher more angry than writing another teacher's homework in a class. Not to mention that this is the son of a rival in love. He said with a half smile. It seems that our famous Mr. Savior thinks that charms lessons are more important than potions. In other words, the trivial trick of potions class is nothing to him. Quote. The little lions around looked at Harry with admiration, thinking that Harry is worthy of being the savior. Courage is big. It's a pity that Professor Snape caught him on the spot. The little snakes are quite gloating. I hope that this famous and famous savior will be unlucky. Among them, some young wizards headed by Malfoy were extremely happy, as if it was Christmas. Although Braun was the number one enemy in Malfoy's mind, he was also happy to see Harry deflated. No professor, I. Harry was about to explain but was interrupted mercilessly by Snape. What do you get when you add Narcissus root powder to a wormwood infusion? Harry muttered a few words. Finally blushing. Sorry, professor. I don't know. Snape pretended not to hear. Then asked. I need a piece of bazaar, so where should I find it? What's the difference between joking Econodum and Chachamamasma Econodum? Harry was already standing there with his head bowed silently at this moment. Snape was not in such an angry mood at first, but after seeing the curly black hair on his head, he became more and more angry. This reminded him of his love rival and deadly enemy. It seems that sometimes fame doesn't live up to its name. He glanced at the crowd present. All the little wizards sat obediently and well behaved at the table. Braun held down Hermione tightly, afraid that she couldn't help raising her hand and being hated by Snape as a typical example. It wasn't that Braun was slandering Snape. Once this old bat got involved with Harry Potter, he would lose his mind in an instant. Then Snape didn't intend to ask the others to get up to answer the question. Braun understands that too. Originally, these three questions were specially prepared for Harry Potter. Daffodils, like lilies, signify remorse brought to the grave. The name of Harry's mother Lily means lily. Wormwood means absence and sorrow. Adding daffodils to wormwood infusion means, I am deeply saddened by Lily's death. Single quote. Bazaar, how to find it is not so much a question to Harry as Snape's own question and answer. How my pain is relieved. 
Although Chimema aconitum is the same species as aconitum, the former represents living for love. The latter represents resentment and malice. This explained the conflict in Snape's mind. He hated Harry Potter and at the same time he would still live strong to protect Lily's child. Worthy of being a master of potions. What you play is fancy. Braun muttered to himself. At the same time, I made up my mind to do a few such questions in the future to highlight and force. Just like old madman Dumbledore has been saying for years, fool. Cry. Residue. Screw. Same. Little wizards ask every year, but Dumbledore just doesn't explain. Smile to see everyone fighting for you to come and go. Now, look through your textbooks. In this lesson, I will teach you how to make an acne potion. This is the most basic and simplest potion. Believe me, if you can't even refine this potion in this class, then I don't think you need to continue wasting time on potions. Because your brains aren't much bigger than trolls. Quote. Snape's poisonous tongue made the little wizards dare not speak out. But in order to prove that his brain is indeed bigger than the monster. So everyone is still working very hard. Ron, why did you drag me around? Otherwise, I would have answered Professor Snape's question. Hermione said angrily. Braun gave Snape a wary look. Do you think the dean of our college will give you extra points? Are you not afraid that he will find some other questions to make things difficult for you and then severely deduct your points? Hermione swallowed as she watched Snape, who was snarling 360 degrees around Harry. She didn't know about the entanglement between Snape and Harry, she just felt that Harry was targeted because he didn't answer Snape's question. For a while, I was also a little scared. Swallowed saliva. Probably not. Then you continue to look over there. Braun raised his eyebrows again in Snape's direction. At this moment Snape had walked to Malfoy's side, and the clumsy goyle beside him was no different from Harry. But the treatment is quite different. Sorry, Professor, I'm not very good at cutting. Gore stammered. No kid works hard. One point for Slytherin. That's for your honesty. After finishing speaking, he ran to the other lion cubs and started the tongue-picking mode. Look at this, do you believe it? Braun sliced the slug proudly. Hermione. Originally, she wanted to defend Snape a few words, but now it seems that she is really naive. Hermione, help me take six snake teeth and grind them into powder. Braun said to Hermione. Don't look at the crucible for refining potions placed in front of everyone. But in fact, it was two little wizards working together to refine a potion. One is because they are not yet proficient to avoid scrambling. The other is to save material. After all, Hogwarts has no food left. Magic plants are inherently expensive. Although there is a greenhouse in the school to support it, money can be saved, right? Watching as Hermione was grinding the snake's teeth, Braun chopped those porcupine quills into small pieces. Pour the snake tooth powder into the crucible and heat it for about 10 seconds. Braun began to pour water into the cauldron. And don't forget to add sliced antennae slugs and porcupine quills. Braun, I read that these things don't seem to need to be chopped. Hermione hesitated looking at the steps in the book. Braun's hands snapped. This is all the knowledge he got through potion basics. Logically speaking, there should be no mistakes, right? How did you come up with the idea of chopping up porcupine quills and slugs? Snape didn't know when he came over. Seeing Braun asked with great interest. I personally think that if the tentacled slugs and porcupine quills are chopped up, the properties of the potion may be more fully integrated. Braun said bravely. Snape nodded without praise or reprimand. Instead, he stood quietly and watched the two men refining the potion. Even Harry was forgotten. Hermione seemed more stressed. The whole person became tense, afraid that he might make a mistake in some steps. In comparison, Braun seemed much calmer. Although it is the first time to operate potions. But the memory in his mind made him seem to have practiced thousands of hammers. Although it looks a little rusty. But the action is not slow at all. It seems that I already know where these things should be placed and how I should do them. Everything has become familiar. Added slugs and porcupine quills. Then wait quietly for the potion to turn light green. There are fine bubbles emerging. Quote. While looking at the crucible, the refining process played back in Braun's mind. Wait until the time is almost up. Braun drew out his wand. Wave it lightly over the cauldron. The magic power poured out and flowed into it. 
The potion in the crucible seemed to be infused with life. Became alive. And Braun wasn't particularly excited about the success of the refinement. After quietly waiting for the potion to cool down, it was loaded into the prepared potion bottle. Then scrub the crucible clean. The whole movement is smooth and smooth without any extra movement. It seems that you really previewed Mr. Roll seriously. Whether it is during the refining process or cleaning the crucible after the refining, it can be seen that you really put your heart into it. What's even more rare is that you have a questioning spirit. This is what a potionist needs most. Potions are never static. Only those who know how to innovate can become a great potionist. Quote. Even Snape couldn't help praising Braun. He loves potions. Or the potion is his second life. If it hadn't been for the magnificent world of potions to support him in the years after Lily's death. Maybe he couldn't hold on anymore. Although he couldn't tell if Braun would become a master of potions in the future. But he already possessed the most important quality of a potions master. That is the spirit of doubt. Braun smiled shyly. Facing Snape's compliment, he decided to accept it shamelessly. Anyway, the system is its own. The rounding of system rewards is obtained by studying hard. Well, nothing wrong. The little wizards around who were refining potions also looked over. He wanted to see if anyone else was being poisoned by Snape. Only this time seems to be different. Why is the old bat smiling? Mr. Braun Roll, you have already refined a scabies potion. I can say that this is the most perfect scabies potion that these two freshmen have refined. I am not exaggerating in the slightest. For that, 20 points to Slytherin. Quote. Snape held up the potion and said. As for Hermione who was acting as an assistant. He subconsciously ignored it. 20 points. The little wizards around couldn't help looking at the yellow-green potion in Snape's hand. At the same time, he looked at Braun standing in front of the long table with shock. It seemed unbelievable. I haven't finished processing the materials yet. The refinement has been completed over there. Is there such a big gap between people? What are you looking at? Are you still refining potions? Snape let out a growl. Make little wizards look like quails again. Obediently crouched in front of his desk and processed the materials. But there is no shortage of private communication. The Luoer family refines potions. No, but I heard that Braun's parents used to be the attending doctors at St. Mungo's Hospital. Oh no wonder. This is what the little snakes are talking about. But the focus of the little lion is even more peculiar. Two little girls in the corner were discussing in low voices. I think that boy is so handsome. Yeah, it's a pity that it's pure blood. Pure blood is good, they are all rich and smart. The other little girl glanced at Neville who was frantically doing experiments. Then skipped the topic very tacitly. Braun how did you do it? Hermione asked in surprise. Braun's performance in class was beyond her expectations. Originally, I had seen other pure-blooded Hermiones in Gryffindor. Barely have some confidence. But after seeing Braun's performance, this confidence has become a lot less. My parents are doctors at St. Mungo's Hospital, and I have been in contact. Without the slightest blush, Braun gave the credit to his parents, whom he had never met. Why don't we go to the library together after dinner? Anyway, there are no classes in the afternoon. Hermione naturally wouldn't refuse. The lunch is quite rich. The food is also not bad. Braun ate to his heart's content. Hogwarts is a place with no secrets. Braun's performance in the morning. Naturally, it was also spread by the little wizards of the same grade. Except for the deadly rival Gryffindor. The little badgers and little eagles from other colleges all looked at Braun with splendor and started talking to Braun in low voices. Especially Kitty Hawk. Compared with the little snake who pursues power excessively. Although Kitty Hawk is more Buddhist, it doesn't mean that they really lie flat like Hufflepuff. On the contrary, they are also very ambitious. This is why it can explain that there are so many snake courtyards, many people's girlfriends are from the eagle courtyard. Gryffindor, on the other hand, seemed a little sneering at Braun's achievements. Lee Jordan is a second-year student in Gryffindor. Also an extremely aggressive Gryffindor. The attitude towards Slytherin has always been disgusting. But think of his own Zulu identity. It's understandable. After all, the purebloods of Slytherin had all participated in the great voyage trade. His ancestors were brought here across the ocean in this way. 
After all the torture and humiliation, if it weren't for the rise of the first generation of the Dark Lord, many wizards would feel the crisis. Thus in order to unite the strength decided to give his Zulu ancestors free words. Li Chowden may not even be able to go to school now. Maybe there are still horses in some stable. What's so great about that Slytherin? I think that old fellow Snape is biased. If you ask me, he's not that great at all. Quote. Li Chowden said angrily. But Hermione was a little unhappy. Braun is not what you say. I was in a group with him. Quote. That's his plot too. And you'd better stay away from him. He's a Slytherin. Whom I want to be with is my right. You don't need to control it. Hermione responded bluntly. There is no awareness of respecting the seniors at all. And she felt that the other party was not so worthy of her respect. Watching the back of Hermione leaving. Lee Chowden's black face flushed with anger. He kept muttering in his mouth. At the same time, he vented his anger on the salad in front of him. Dot dot dot. The Hogwarts library is by far one of the largest in the entire wizarding world. Apart from Gaul's Bobadan Academy and Durmstrang, even the hamsters of Armanikan's Ifamini Academy can't compare with it. Here you can find any book you want to find. From the tomes that record the history of wizards to the magic books that write all kinds of powerful magic. Even alchemy and potions have been dabbled in. It is heaven for wizards hungry for knowledge. Sure enough. The greater the hope, the greater the disappointment. Braun sighed and looked at the book on alchemy in his hand. Don't look at the well-chosen name of alchemy puzzle. In fact, the whole article is nonsense. There is nothing of value except those various conjectures. The other books are similar. Even if there are some valuable ones, Braun is confused because they are full of metaphors and code words. And some of the knowledge gained from Bojenbach is limited to some methods of using ancient runes. As for the more important things such as how to seal the magic circuit, there is no mention of it. But Braun also understands. The fact that the other party can tell him the basics already makes him happy. Naturally, I didn't intend to ask for so much in my heart. Looking at the restricted area not far away. Braun couldn't help itching. I always feel that there may be some real knowledge there. Isn't Voldemort's Horcrux making method found there? Learn the illusion spell during this time. Take the time to come and have a look. Braun thought to himself. I was thinking about seeing a figure with a turban and a smell of garlic coming in. It was Hogwarts' defense against the dark arts professor Kai Garlic Voldemort Lowe. The other party walked up to Mrs. Pants, the librarian. With a smile, under the reluctant eyes of the other party, he entered the restricted area. That's the new Professor Quirrell. It is said that his turban was given by an Egyptian muggle prince. Quote. Hermione thought Braun was curious about Quirrell and immediately explained. There is also the smell of garlic all over his body. It is said that he offended a vampire, and he made himself like this all day long in order to avoid the other party's pursuit. Ahem. Mrs. Pants coughed twice. He glanced at Hermione with dissatisfaction. This is her home court and no one is allowed to speak casually in this quiet holy place. Destroy books. Otherwise, she would slap his butt with a feather duster and drive him out. Of course, Quirrell is an exception. As a professor, Mrs. Pants was not satisfied with the smell of garlic. But it's hard to say anything. Who let others be a professor and be a janitor? Hermione looked at Mrs. Pants in embarrassment. I dare not speak anymore. Pass the note to Braun instead. Braun, what do you do in the stargazing class at night? Looking at the stars. Are you using a telescope? He knew that Braun's grandmother was a fortune teller. So I want to know in advance what the stargazing class does. Braun shook his head apologetically. Sorry, I don't know too well, but I don't think so. When my grandmother stargazing, it seems that she directly uses the water in a magic basin to look at the reflection of the stars. Of course, there are times when you look directly at the sky. Quote. That's it. I hope Professor Sinista can be more reliable. Hermione said worriedly. Then I discussed today's homework with Braun. About how to make the glow of the luminescence spell stronger. And the feeling after refining the potion today. And submit a completed scabies potion before the next class starts. It's just that these have nothing to do with Braun. Because of his good performance in charms and potions, the two professors were very lenient and didn't give him homework. Instead, he was left with more time to learn what he wanted to learn. 
This may be the unique preferential treatment for top students. Had dinner. The little wizards walked towards the castle's observatory according to the location of the class schedule. Needless to say still sworn enemies Slytherin and Gryffindor a class. Of course, because the stargazing class depends on the weather, there is a high probability that Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff will follow along. In the same way, in bad weather, Slytherin and Gryffindor will follow the other two houses. I don't know if it's the bad taste of the school. There are only a few courses on the schedule. Basically Slytherin and Gryffindor. Then Ravencraw and Hufflepuff have a class together. Braun didn't have much to say about that either. He is just an ordinary first-year student. Studying hard is what he has to do. Still, haven't you arrived yet? Sabini asked out of breath. Theodore on the side is not as good as Sabinina. He, who was originally thin, would have turned pale at this moment if Braun hadn't supported him by the side. It is even possible to faint directly. This is only the seventh floor. There are two more floors. Although Braun was also quite tired, he was better compared to the two of them. Since he escaped from the wolf's den, he has never neglected to exercise. I'm afraid of encountering a time when I don't have time to wave my wand. Didn't the great wizard Gandalf say it? A wizard who doesn't stack physical attack, defense and physique to play with a hammer. A wizard who can carry a magic wand to jump and cut is a good wizard. Certainly. Braun said that magnificent magic is still worth learning. But physical exercise is equally important, isn't it? Dumb. Tom was flying in midair excitedly. Braun hadn't meant to bring it. But it seems to be annoying to stay in the dorm. Follow Braun out and stay away. It seems that he wants to take a good look at the learning environment of the shit shovel officer. Another ten minutes passed. The three finally made it to the observatory on the ninth floor with difficulty. It was unlike any classroom Braun had ever seen. There is no creature in Formalin without the mystery of Professor Trelawney's classroom. There is also no such a wide range of books in Professor Flitwick's classroom. Some are just giant glass. That's right. This is a room made entirely of glass. Braun can even easily see the bright stars in the sky through the roof. And it's not that vague. Rather, it is somewhat similar to the clear picture seen in a telescope. In the very center of the room is a giant star trail. The hole is made of brass. Various runes are engraved on it to form a connected magic circuit. Yingying magic flow. Driving the operation of this huge machine. From here you can see the movement of various planets. All the little wizards were shocked by this huge machine. Nothing inspires admiration and awe more than size. Even Braun, who has an afterlife soul. This was the first time he had seen an alchemical item powered entirely by magic. Even the Hogwarts trains are only enchanted with some kind of magic that prohibits muggle observation. But it all comes down to using the steam engine. It seems that everyone is here. A somewhat calm male voice made everyone present feel overwhelmed. It was a somewhat bald man. Unlike his steady voice, his appearance is very joyful. Some are like Mr. Bean without hair. Wearing a small suit instead of the usual wizard robes. Seeing that the students were all looking at him, he also showed a kind smile. Muggles weather forecast predicts that there will be heavy rain the day after tomorrow. In order to prevent everyone from being able to attend classes normally, I have rescheduled all classes to today. Braun was a little surprised to see this wizard, whose style and demeanor was nothing like the other professors. After all, there may not be many wizards who are willing to read the muggle weather forecast. Even those wizards of the Weasley family who advocate good treatment of muggles. In fact, at the root, there is also a kind of looking down on muggles from the bottom of my heart. Just like when I was young. Even though he has been corrupted, he still looks at those powerful powers with an attitude of, learning from the barbarians to control the barbarians. But the problem is, UTM are originally ye I really don't know where they got their sense of superiority from. The same goes for wizards. Even though he knew the convenience of the muggle society, he was unwilling to accept it from the bottom of his heart. Of course, this may also have a lot to do with the Wizarding Secrecy Act. Okay, I think everyone should be very curious about this thing. He patted the brass planetarium. Comparing two people is like an ant caressing a giant. It is a product of the Bronze Age school of unity 3,600 years ago. At that time, wizards did not come to school uniformly like they do now. 
Instead, they were divided into different schools, and their research directions were also different. That was a brilliant era. Quote. As he spoke, Professor Sinista showed some longing on his face, as if he was yearning for the era when a hundred schools of thought contended and all kinds of academics competed to open up. The main study of this school is the witchcraft of astrology. It is advocated to use the power of the stars to change the disadvantages of wizards relying on magic wands. Create powerful sorcery. Quote. As he spoke, he patted the planetarium beside him again. But it's a pity. They failed. The instrument passed through several circulations and was finally passed on to Hogwarts through the hands of the last descendant of the Unity School. Quote. The eyes of the little wizards were all complicated. I didn't expect the big guy in front of me to have such a tortuous experience. Okay, come on everyone, today is the first class and I won't tell you any big truths. Astrology is a very important course for wizards, and some powerful potions, alchemy, or ritual magic need to be carried out in conjunction with astrology. You cannot avoid wanting to be a powerful wizard. So now, enjoy the mystery from the astrology with me. Quote. Braun only felt that the originally stable magic power of the big guy in front of him began to become agitated. At the same time, the rotation speed of the originally slow-moving planetarium became faster and faster. At the moment when everyone has not reacted, the originally bright classroom instantly became pitch black. Everyone was plunged into darkness. Before they could panic, the light came on again. The huge earth floats in midair. At the same time, various planets form a whole set of planetary maps according to their positions. This is the earliest astrological chart drawn by wizards. In their view, the Earth is the only one in the universe. All planets revolve around the Earth. Quote, Although I didn't see Professor Sinista. But the voice of the other party was transmitted very clearly. The astrology that was originally static in front of everyone also rotated. The Earth is at the very center and all the other planets revolve around the Earth. But then we found out that the classical wizards were wrong. The Sun is the true source of all things. Quote. Once again the planets changed so that the Sun was at the very center. The Earth is at the outermost point. Compared with other planets, it seems a bit inconspicuous. Our main purpose of this session is to lead you to know the Moon, the planet closest to the Earth. Dot dot dot. Two hours later. The little wizards wandered out from the observatory. There was unconcealable excitement in their expressions. It can be said that the stargazing class is more interesting than all the classes they have taken today combined. Huge planetarium. And the planet that can appear around people. It made the little wizards have enough eye addiction. This is the magic in their fantasy. Instead of taking your own little wand and trying to make it shine. Or refining a cauldron of bubbling and foul-smelling potions. It's just a pity that homework is still left. Sabini sighed helplessly. It's not much, just write about the changes in life on Earth caused by lunar tides. I read the general content in the book. It's only 13 inches long. Theodore seemed to be open-minded. Not as pessimistic as Sabini. First-year students are still relaxed. Even homework is only required to be handed in before the next class. This is no difficulty for them who only have four classes a week. You must know that the next class time is next Monday. Braun didn't pay much attention to the conversation between the two. On the contrary, he is still overwhelmed by the magnificent and fantastic scene. The original book did not mention what was in the astronomy class. Originally, he thought it was just drawing astrology charts and the like. How could I have imagined such an immersive experience? That sense of authenticity. Even in the developed period of later generations, it may be difficult to achieve it. But this is a product of the era of wizards more than 3,700 years ago. From this, he can also know why Professor Sinister respected that era so much. It is true that today's magic world is simply a stagnant pool compared to that time. Although there are innovations in it, it is far from the prosperity of more than 3,000 years ago. Braun. Braun. What? Seeing Theodore calling himself. Braun looked up in a daze. Showed a shy smile to the other party. Sorry, I was just thinking about the stargazing class just now. I'm a little distracted. Who said it wasn't that? It really is, how do you say it, it's amazing. Zabini hurriedly demonstrated the new words he had just learned from Braun. This is what Braun said inadvertently during lunch. 
but it was remembered by the other party, and no matter what I did in the afternoon, I would say it was too good. It made Braun very speechless. Several people went downstairs. Take a stroll around the playground. September nights are not very cold for England. The fresh smell of grass mixed with the aroma of earth wiped away the tiredness of everyone in class. The whole person seems to have become quiet. Except them. There are also many young wizards of other ages. They didn't seem to think that there would be so many little wizards at once. Many lovers who were still in the grass couldn't help but let out a scream. Then I saw them running out in disheveled clothes. It made many little wizards laugh. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.